shit with EA and everybody making their own launchers. Steam's been doing it for years. Don't try to compete with it. Just be happy that they have such a nice, stable platform for you. Yeah, I, you know, I don't mind companies trying to compete. I, I, I truly don't. It doesn't bother me. But if it's when they start pulling like weird hinky ass shit with it, like the exclusive bullshit. That that's when I kind of yeah. pissed off about it. Yeah. So on my three hundred hour game, I have twenty eight thousand logistics robots and sixteen thousand construction robots. Nice. Well, this one I had switched primarily. This one is primarily all logistics. There are almost no belts in this whole world. There's only belts out by... Actually, no, I got a majority of the miners switched over to having... So basically, right now, if I pull up logistics and then click on my networks dropdown, I have 17 individual networks. Each one has their own. So if I went through each one of those, because that's all my miners and everything, with my outside... Oops. Note to self, do not have the nuclear missile equipped while you're pushing random buttons and talking. Yes, yes, you, you, you learned that one quickly. Yeah, I just killed myself. I was like, I heard the noise that's, and I'm like, what the hell was that? And all of a sudden, boom, 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 and I'm like, uh-oh, I know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> the death screen popped up, and I was like, ah, oh, shit. It's okay, I didn't do anything in that world. So just reload. Bad okay. times have occurred. <laughs> yes. Please reload. Take... Yeah, I hear you. You didn't go outside. You got you went outside when I came home. You go potty. What do you say? You go potty. What? Oh. <laughs> There's a little howl for you. I'll let her. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. So, what was I doing? Oh, yes, I'm going to take the... Take the nuclear missile out of my inventory. Or my, my hot bar. Because I think it's C or space that lets you just free fire it. And, well, C, my push to talk. Right. Yeah, my push to talk is V, so moving my hands around on the keyboard, I hit one of those two. Oof. Yeah. So, let's see. Unfortunate. Oh, not that one. Okay, you got a hundred. Let's just. Oh, that's a defense network. Your defense network. Your defense network. Um, your defense network. Your defense network. There's a mine. This one has a thousand logistics, and I did the math for the each outpost based on how many miners there were and how many um, train stops were on it. So, just so I didn't have too many... Well, basically, I didn't really do much math. I just added logistics robots until they stopped flying out. <laughs> I took them back in. So, they're just short of how many logistics robots they need to run at peak. This one has 750. So, majority of my mining networks, I think, have 1,000. Yeah, that's 200. So, that's a smaller one. It's probably dead. 4K? Okay, well, that's a big one. I'll take that back. A couple of them are big. But, yeah... That's, I decided I wanted to do all trains and robots. So this was my original game. And I literally stripped my, I just put down a whole fuck ton of logistics storage chests. Mm. And I literally deconstructed everything except for my robo ports. <laughs> <laughs> and I rebuilt everything from the ground up as being purely robots. The only thing that I didn't want to do with robots was the, um, Fluids, so I do have liquid pipes. Ooh, a rocket just okay. crashed. How many is that? Uh, 14,000 uh, or 1,400. 1,450 rockets launched. Nice. On this play. Yeah. So I have a lot of research done. I have my research primarily up and 100% running. Um, 
I think there's a way that I can save the save file to a directory somewhere and then send you it. That way you could load it in technically and play around with it. Mm -hmm. But I would have to figure out how to do that. I know there's a way to send a save because I know they're not that big. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, this one is all robots and a whole bunch of 2-1 trains. <laughs> Little fucking rockets. Because they have the uh, nuclear fuel. After uh, somebody uh, mm -hmm. I told, told you me that. about that. Yep. Well, and then remember, so remember I went and looked for it. I couldn't find it. Because it's actually a... Or no, no, I put nu uh, just nuclear fuel into the trains and it didn't do anything. No, you need like the special <laughs> fuel cell for it or something. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, there's nuclear fuel cells. And I didn't realize that. I was like, oh, okay, well, that was dumb of me. Oh, and this my, this one has my uh, giant artillery train. So it has <laughs> two, three, four, two, four, six, eight. Always oh, fun. Yeah, it's got 12 turrets on it. I've seen, like, the ones with, like, hundreds of turrets where they make, like, special stations to hold the whole thing. It's like, that's just too much for me. Yeah. I mean, even with all these robots flying around, I'm holding my FPS 60, UPS 60. So I'm I'm happy with that. But I also have 16 gigs of RAM and uh, an i7. So I have a lot of a lot of power for this kind of game. Graphics wise, that's one of the reasons that I don't have a lot of more modern graphics because I still have a 560M technically, which is essentially the equivalent of like a 400 series Nvidia because of being mobile. And I only have, I think, two gigs of dedicated RAM for that bad boy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I figured I've been playing a lot of Rim World and I haven't really touched Factoria. I don't I think I just got it got stale for me with this because I didn't quite know where to go with it. And I did have another play that one has save this one. It doesn't take long to save, so it must not be a big problem. So this one has I mean look. Yeah, this this world has eighty hours played, so that's not bad. Yeah, see the the uh, challenge I have with this particular world is I um, challenge myself by putting the only starting water, and the oh. game was like, okay, yes. So the game was like, okay, we'll give you a starting water, and they gave me like a fifteen by fifteen lake. That is it. Mm -hmm. There is no more water on the map. Yep, that, that's how that works. Got a piping yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is it's not a matter of piping it everywhere. It's the number of pumps I can fit. Yeah. So I eventually will run out of accessible water. Cause there's... Yep. 3, I have 24 or 25 pumps that I was able to fit on it. That's it. So yeah, essentially that's enough to run like one or two nuclears and then all of my uh, oil. Mm -hmm. Not much. Because my big one, that the 300 hour one, that has like six or... No, that one has close to 20 of my uh, four gigawatt nuclear power plants running the whole thing. Oh, shit. I don't know what they're going to do. Well, I guess I'm playing real world. 
Yeah, this uh, colony is going pretty good for me. That's good. I'm glad to figure, or glad to see that you uh, got the balancing, or at least for the most part, got the balancing down. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, for me, it, it's really food was the biggest hurdle at first, and now it's just making sure I can defend myself. Yep. And that, that's really it. But those, those were my two big hang-ups about it. One thing, if you do build in mountains, uh, if you want to cheese the mechanics for wealth and beauty, smoothing walls is not quite as beautiful as building stone walls, but it is like a tenth of the wealth. Right. Yeah. So they just take really long to do. So you just have to have a good construction person. Mm -hmm. Or have construction people otherwise idle. Yeah. Because otherwise, the only other thing they're going to do is... Holy shit, they've built nine helmets already? Fuck. Hello, boys. Yeah, really? <laughs> yeah, he has made ten simple helmets out of steel for me. I can now equip my melee guys with helmets. I'm researching plate armor, too. Actually, I have like three um, melee guys, and I'm pro I pr usually just keep them always in military gear, so armor, helmets. Just finally I'm able to make them. Yeah, I have most of my people just there whatever they want to load out with loaded. Well, I keep the ranged people back, so I don't really need to have them with armor. Uh, why does Factorio take so long to close out? It shouldn't. Are you, are you currently running the beta? I do not believe so. Oh, god damn it. Sloth is eating all my, my hay production. All beta. Sorry, say again? I am none opt out of all beta. Hmm. But yeah, when I exit Factorio, it's only Factorio that does this. The Steam Cloud Sync, you know, like loads at the end. It's sitting at 0% right now, and I can't launch another game until that finishes. I mean, you can kill the process. I don't even know what process that is. Factorio? Should be factorio.exe. No, 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 the game is not running. It's the Steam Cloud syncing. Oh, that. Um, Your internet, yeah. you blink and it happens. With my internet, it's like... Uh, well, no, even Factorio, the saves are huge because it, the saves scale um, linearly with the number of chunks revealed because it calculates them on a per-revealed basis. Um, which basically means that it's it's area based, linearly increased with the square number of squares. Mm -hmm. Which is so my uh, three hundred hour one has hundreds of thousands of chunks to reveal. I'm pretty right, far that's that's side. why it takes so long is because it's so big. Yeah, the thing is, is for me it's sitting at zero percent zero bytes. Oh, um, if you tell Steam to close, it'll just pop up a window and let you force it. I'm a smart man, I just hit the X on Steam. I like how the squirrel's gone Manhunter and it's running away from the colonists. Interesting. Yeah. I guess we're eating squirrel tonight. Oh, did you get remember uh, that mortar strike? Huh? <laughs> I'm still oh, yeah. remember that that picture that I sent you. I was mm -hmm. complaining right before you left about the mortar strikes being horrible. Yep. They had three direct hits all right on top of each other and killed like eight of them. Nice. It's like, okay, okay. Now, now I'm not so upset about it. They redeemed themselves. <laughs> 
I wonder if I just turn the Steam Cloud off. I can do that, can't I? Yeah, you can turn Steam Sync off, I think, on a per-game basis, even. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at right now. Uh, to theater updates. Enable Steam Cloud Synchronization for Factorio Uncheck. That'll be a lot nicer then. Because I don't care if it's not backed up to Steam. Mm -hmm. I know my hard drives are perfectly fine. You know, the only thing about this map, I don't remember where the Ancient Horror is. Oh, um, usually the Steel Wall, so... Yeah, I know. I'm, I haven't been able to locate it yet. Like, I, I found it right near the beginning. And I haven't been able to detect it again. It might be here. Yeah, I think it's there. But yeah, basically... It's not, it's not as obvious as it usually is. Usually it's, like, super obvious. You know, constructed wall like jetting half out through a cliff face. Yeah. Oh, well. I was going to say, mine around... If it's the Ancient Danger, it will be a completely sealed chamber. Right, that's what I'm talking about, the Ancient Danger. Yeah. If it's an Ancient Danger, you should be able to, you should, you can mine all the way around it to, like, confirm it is. Because pretty much every other structure in the game is never a fully sealed building. There's always an opening. If you ever notice, like, all the outbuildings, there's very rarely ever one that's completely sealed. Mm -hmm. That's per design, to make it a little easier to identify Ancient Dangers. Right. Ah, good old RimWorld crashing when it's launching, and then <laughs> crashing, and then launching, and then crashing, and then launching. It can't make up its mind. It's all the mods I have loaded. Yeah. You know, I like that I can smelt a weapon to get steel out of it, but I can't smelt down my uh, armor. There's a mod for that. I'm sure. <laughs> He knew I was going to say that. Oh god, I just... Oh. Fucking ants. Fuck off. Playing fucking Words with Friends. $30 a month. $30... No, it's thirty dollars one time or ten dollars a month to get rid of ads. Ugh. For a mobile game. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't not gonna do that. No, I know. Oh the holy game. hell, finally! Exotic Good Trader shows up. It's like the first caravan <laughs> I've had in, in probably like a in game month, like thirty days or so. Now oh, more than that. Too. Now more than that, it's been been probably close to a year. It's a door fortress. It shows up once a year. <laughs> yeah, I did install a mod that um, that is handy for that in the late game, not in the early game because it only affects trade ships. But it increases the pop, you know, the trade ships coming in. Not by much. Like you get at most, I think, one. But you're pretty much guaranteed to get a regular supply of trade ships. It may be, you know, a bunch of textile traders or something like that. But that's, you know, still at least you can get rid of some crap versus when you're sitting there for you know i had it where i went two or three seasons and didn't have a trader it's like come fucking on i've i've had three raids like i have all this clothing i need to sell it and weapons and all that shit well for ah damn it the exotic ghost trader doesn't trade in, in drugs dude i, I have a hundred i have a yeah the exotic goods trader i know i don't believe they do bulk goods does so yeah exotic goods because I, I, <laughs> I, I have 130, 179 Ambrosia, 17 Yayo. Ooh, that's a good take. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have like seven, I have 17 Yayo, and I have some other stuff that's kind of less sal saleable. What do they got to offer? Glitter World Medicine, components, advanced components. Hey, how's it going? It's going good. A doomsday rocket launcher, huh? Yeah, I build those. I can craft them. I'm pretty sure that's a mod, too. 
I have too many pods. <laughs> He'll sell me a liver, but not... Or a bionic heart. Drugs. Pain stopper. That might be useful. Don't buy drugs, oh, yes. he said. Holy shit, they want 996 silver for that? For a pain stopper? That's cheap. I, I have a good trader. But I, I really don't have a use for it. Like, my 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 people aren't it's, that advanced. I don't have a doctor that could install it. Keep it around, though. It will increase your colony wealth a little bit more than 9,000 or 900 silver will. But it's still handy to have for some. I have 1,100 can... silver. Like, like, it's like, if I buy that, I'm not buying anything else from him. You don't have anything to sell? He won't buy any of the shit I have to sell. I have drugs. Oh. I'm not selling him components. I'm not selling him a mega sloth. I'm not selling yeah. him my packaged survival meals. Uh, that's that's a coin toss then because uh, they're not as common to come by and get, but they're really nice to have for like somebody with a scar that you like a torso scar that you can't get rid of. Mm -hmm. That's a good colonist and you know gets that constant mood debuff for being in pain. It's just like the pain stopper is nice for that and for um, any time like food poisoning, like in extreme pain and all that, gone. Right. Yeah, I, right. I mean, I can see how it's super it. useful. It's just, I don't have enough silver to buy that and the advanced component he brought. Oh, yeah, the advanced component's worth more. You need that to advance more. So hopefully the next guy has one. <laughs> yeah, if I had to pick between Pain Stopper and Advanced Component, I'd go Advanced Component. If I sell three of my 36 packaged survival meals, which are like the original meals I arrived here with, I haven't gotten any more. I, I got hunting up really quickly. If I sell just three of them, I can afford both the component and the pain stopper. I think I'm going to do that. The food, frankly, I have, I have one metric fuck ton of food right now. Yep. I, I have a hundred meals. And like a thousand and meat you can in the easily, freezer. Once you research the package, you can easily make three. Yeah. <laughs> because I traded with him, our relations have gone up, and now he's going to go toss the implant in the freezer next to the joints. I just find that funny. We're, we're storing our bionic implants next to our, you know, yayo, beer, ambrosia, and our weed. I have 200 bottles of beer. Yay! Well, I also have... Did they just bring, like, a motherfucking grizzly bear into my goddamn living room? It happens. Oh, it's a train. I feel it a wild one. It. Oh no, they can't go through. Um, it, they can because if the doors were open, they won't wander through unless they're manhunt. Oh okay. Yeah, unless you had the door set to stay open. No, I never set my doors that way unless I'm trying to do uh, some hinky shit. Yep. My uh, my maze has doors at both ends that are held open, so I can close them if I need to. I haven't needed to because most people don't make it through the maze, so... Let's make some plate armor. Disallow wood, because you're making it out of steel. What, you don't like the wooden plate armor? Apparently he's decided to ignore it and make it out of wood anyway. Oh, well, he might have already been starting the build before, before you got that done. Yeah, I think they did. Those fuckers. 
Yeah, I always freeze time when I'm making a new build, that way they can't do that. Yeah. But now I have a bunch of wild pigs, so, you know, wild bacon. Oh yeah, I need to set them. Manager! So how have you been finding the manager mod? Is it making it a little bit easier to start up? Uh, yeah, it's it's not so much the startup that I would, you know, the startup was fine. What it's making it easier is for is just maintaining stock of things like wood and steel. I don't have to worry so much about having to constantly, like, oh, I'm out of wood, gotta cut down half the goddamn map of forest to get my wood stockpile back up. Yep. Yeah, when, when you sent me that screenshot, I'm like, you know, it's like halfway to looking like Dwarf Therapist. <laughs> Mine? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a little overkill, but it's really handy. So you say. Well, being able to set, you know, like construction over deconstruction for certain pawns and deconstruction over construction for certain pawns. How many piggies do I want? You want all of the bacon. Yeah, I know. I'm thinking I'm going to go uh, more pig route, so I think I'll do 10 and 5. Oh, the war merchant token. It's just trading season, I guess. Ugh. He will buy my drugs. Of course, doesn't really have anything really great to offer. Like a tri he's offering like tribal shit. There we go. Now I will have ten female adults, five female, or five female, five uh, male adults, and then fifty and fifty is what I standard go for my. Uh... Oh, that broke the game. Nope. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Oh, there's there's text in the numerical boxes for the values, so it's getting confused. I can sell my uh, drugs. Let's see. 151 joints of smoke leaf. And that's already put him over his limit. Fucking lightweight. It, it's more. It, it would cost him more money than he has. I know. I know. <laughs> this is also me dumping a bunch of my shitty weapons that I've been pulling off of uh, raiders. Mm hmm. That's the best. All the knives and clubs and stuff. Yeah. Man, I sold everything from the last six raids and I made five bucks. Mm -hmm. It's like I'm intergalactic, you know, space uh, drug facility. Oh, he's selling a breeding pair of boomalopes. I'm buying that shit. <laughs> Sell Why? all the drugs. Why? Then I basically have an unlimited supply of chem fuel. Oh yeah, true. I don't because I don't have the machine that makes infinite amounts yet. I haven't gotten a mission to go grab it, nor do I really have people to spare to send to go get it. Because you need to send a fuckload of people usually. No, my well, the reason I said why is because I have combat extended, so boom loops actually drop what's called FSX, which is a 
incendiary Inci nope high explosive component and then mm -hmm. pyrethium is the incendiary component for weapons since you have to craft ammo so i was right. like why do you want those is like if you don't really have any need for high explosives yet and i was like oh yeah that's right they actually did chem fuel back in the vanilla yep and chem fuel i don't need it yet but if i can get a breeding pair i can start building up a stockpile of it and i'll have mm -hmm. it when i need it for making mortars so I can just start immediate production of HE mortars when I get the mortar tech. Yep, and you can run uh, biofuel gener or, um, fuel generators and stuff too. Yeah, if I have to, yeah. Well, you'll have, like you said, basically a free supply of it, so you, you could easily supplement your power with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think from what I remember reading online, one adult Boomlo produces enough to permanently fuel one generator. Well, that's not bad. But this also replenishes my silver supply because I was down to eight silver, and now I'm, I'm going to end up with a, you know, eleven hundred and twenty-nine, and I still have some drums left over, mostly ambrosia. Yep, buy all of his money. Wait till you start getting like the um. Oh, see, now I have to think because I have that trader extended thing that makes the trader show up more often. I don't know if that actually adds more traders or not, but there is like for the space traders, there's like textile and um prosthetics and you know different traders in the different departments and like the prosthetics traders have like upwards of 20,000 silver that you can get off of them but you can basically only sell them prosthetics <laughs> but then yeah they'll have upwards of 10,000 for the other guys I think the pirate merchant is one that's a vanilla trader and they have a lot of silver on them to trade for Hey, so I've finished trading, training my Mega Sloth for hauling. That's good. Now he'll actually start earning that food. Mm -hmm. Of course, I don't really have much for him to haul at the moment, because he's not allowed in the... Like, he can't haul food for me, so he'll eat it. Yeah, that's annoying. Uh, make kibble for him, for sure. What, do you need kibble for him? I thought he could eat to hay. I got a fuck ton of hay. Oh, well, if you, well, I suppose you don't really have an abundance of insect meat. I use insect meat and hay for kibble, and pretty much everything oh, can yeah. eat kibble. So you, you get more nutrients out of it. But yeah, you right. can use kibble to extend the hay. Right, see, for me, hay, I have an abundance. It's, it's not the hay I'm, I'm running low on. Ever. I, I have 1,900 hay stockpile. Yeah, I have a shelf out in my pasture for the alpacas and boomlopes because I don't let them wander. Yep, the zone restriction is nice for that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I have all of mine. Like, they have their own grazing. And then the chickens have their own area inside of that that's just the interior area with all the beds. Like, remember when Grand Lizard said so many animal beds? It's like, yeah. I have 60, 70 plus chickens. Mm-hmm. Well, and the fun thing is, every single one of those is made from elephant leather. Yep. Oh, I just realized something. Plate armor, you can't wear a jacket with it. Oh, so you'll have to do equip and um, unequip. Well, I'll just change them from melee armor to normal when uh, winter comes around. Because at, at the moment, it's like September, so it's not a big deal. And then my growing no, season's 40 out of 60, so it's not like I have a long winter. The only issue, I think I'll probably only, I'll probably only have to do that if um, there's a cold snap. Otherwise, they'll, they'll be unhappy, but they'll survive. Yeah, so you'll have to deal with the move debuff. Yeah, but I can deal with the move debuff. I hate move debuffs.
And there we go, seven more rhinoceroses. Yeah, see, I have herds of Boomalo, so. Shit. Wow, Boomalo don't even have a 10% like angry thing. I never knew that. They used to. No, I just clicked tame on one, and it didn't do the have a ten percent chance of going berserk. Hmm. So yeah, keep out for keep your eye out for boomalopes. That means they're. I mean, even if they have that ten percent, it's always worthwhile because of the free chem fuel. No. Okay, so they're two percent upon hunted, one point three percent on failed tame. Yeah. So virtually nothing. But for me, they're not they're not chem fuel, they're uh, FSX. So I just turn wood into chem fuel. Oh, so you're using the bioreactor? Yeah. Well, no, I use the biofuel refinery, but yeah. The f fuck them! I have cargo pods. I'm like, hey, cool. What cool shit did I get? Sweet. 185 potatoes. Oh, yay! Potatoes! This is on top of the 400 potatoes I have already in my freezer. Like, like I'm I'm space Ireland at the moment. I, I make booze, potatoes, and drugs. I mean, what am I? I have 2,700 corn and 600 rice. <laughs> I was mad, too. I had a uh, jailbreak and... I need to figure out a like a find a mod or something so that they don't use lethal force with prisoners. Like they, I'd rather them go up and punch them versus shooting them from three feet away, because mm -hmm. the guns are so powerful and the prisoners are naked that about thirty percent of the time they kill the motherfuckers. It's like God, fucking! I was trying to recruit him. <laughs> yeah, he had a fifteen and double passion and growing. Come on, guys. That's pretty much all I do is just recruit people with good passions and then non no, non annoying stats like um acetic. Like I, I don't take negative traits. Like they're just a release to me. Oh my muffalo herd my muffalo herd is growing. There's another muffalo baby. Somewhere in here I am missing some roof and I don't know where. There is a button to show you. Down by the speed changer, very top right of the uh -huh, eight or so. What the fuck? Okay. Yeah, it shows you all. Roof. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I see it. It's just, why the fuck aren't you putting a roof there? Can they not reach it? It's right fucking it? there. Yeah, he just finished. He just did it. He just built the roof. Oh, I just no. told him to. Yeah, usually, roof takes priority over ever construction projects. So. If they have nothing to do, they'll build a roof for sure. That's weird. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have no idea why. It wasn't set. It wasn't set to no build. It was just the generic default. Oh, the ignore. Yeah, it was just empty. Wait. So you had build roof selected and dragged over that area, and it didn't build the roof. No, that's how I forced him to do it. Oh, okay. I had to I had to mark it as build roof, but before it had nothing there. It was not it was it did not have the do not build roof, which is what I have around my inner courtyard. Yeah, the orange. Mm -hmm. Huh. So they didn't automatically queue up building a roof there. That's interesting. Very. I have so many people, I honestly am just trying to sit here and think, alright, what do I need now? <laughs> I don't need anything. <laughs> I have 38 fucking pawns. Like, this is absolutely insane. I don't know how people go beyond this. Like, there there are screenshots of people with 200 plus pawns on one map. Well, I mean, I suppose that's what you want to do. Group yeah, of pirates oh. Let's see, what what do they got? Knife, knife, revol normal revolver, knife, poor auto pistol. Oh, they're attacking immediately, but these guys are so uber fucked right now. 
These guys are totally screwed. They done goofed? They done goofed coming here. Let's see, my two good melee guys with armor. Oh, actually, I have three good melee guys with armor and, like, knives. The best one having the equipment, like, that you start with. So he's, like, the actually advanced shit. Let's see, one bolt action, two bolt actions. And, oh, my, my third rifleman's got food poisoning and is laid up in a hospital. Ah, oh, well, can't have everything. Yep, that is true. So those two, remember I told you I had the two psychopaths? They're still, um... They're attacking my, my mega sloth! Those fucks are going to die! That's not even recruitable right there. Hey, Spectre? Hey, Spectre. Hello. Underdark is having a raid of pirates right now. Yeah, they attacked my trained mega sloth. It ended badly for them. They attacked him in melee with knives. It went about as well as you can expect. So under those two that I have that are my uh, two seconds, both of which still in my uh, prison, I have them set to reduce resistance right now because they both have huge drug addictions. Mm -hmm. So I'm waiting for the tolerances to go down. Fortunately, the one with wake up is at 90%. So the wake up is the worst of all of the addictions because they can actually die from the withdrawals. Um, but she also had uh, alcohol and psychite or alcohol and um, smoke weed. So she had, I guess the trifecta technically, but, um, yeah, because psychics wake up. But so yeah, once their tolerances go down to none, and they're not addicted to it anymore. Then we get to uh, recruit them. Nice. And I can go dig up all the graves and burn the bodies. So yeah, it must not let it must not notify you when it's less than two percent because when you try to tame the uh, boomalopes, it doesn't say anything. But when you try to hunt them, it does warn you. Is there no way to prioritize healing for animals? Um, you should be able to tend. They have to be in your animal handling skill group, not your doctor. Yeah, I got one guy that's 
Every time I click on it, it just gives me whatever is under him. Is he downed, or is he just... No, injured? he's just... He's injured, but he's death in 10 hours injured. You should be able to select the pawn that has... Try your doctor. It might be the other way around. There should be a right-click tend. Mm -hmm. Nope. A melee attacking one of my bears. This is gonna go well. I think there's only two known recorded uh, kills of bears with uh, people using only their bare hands. Just two, huh? Well, yeah, usually they use human hands. Well, I meant this. Did they? Does that only count people that survived afterwards? You know, I don't know. I know one of what he basically did was he uh, he managed to essentially choke the bear to death and survived that ordeal. And by God, that's one fucking hell of a way to kill a bear. Pretty fucking impressive considering how huge those things are. All right, it's you, it does work. It's just the animal has to go down first. You, you basically have to ignore him bleeding out until it's an emergency. Oh, okay. It's fucking stupid. You can't do preempt. You can't do preemptive care on, on animals for some reason. Mo like, even if I put an animal spot in my hospital, I can't tell the sloth to uh, go rest until healed. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying it with a doctor and uh, just a. Handler, so somebody that has a high handling skill but no doctoring, and somebody. Oh, and doctor. now there's a dry storm, a thunderstorm. Those are fun. Yeah. Still built out of wood. No, my outbuildings are made out of stone. That's good. It is. It's very good. Which is good because. Because um, <laughs> the fire is approaching my base. Basically, got a wildfire because it just lit off like the entire like western section of the uh, forest on fire. Yeah, my so fire break. Fire break. Well, my fire my fire break is just stone walls. And sending people out in wooden armor to fight the fire. This ought to be fun. That's a genius plan. <laughs> Isn't it? I didn't want him to, to build wooden armor, but apparently he did. I really wish the default for prisoners was reduce resistance, and then you could like pick and choose which ones you recruited instead of the no interaction. You have Wormworld, right, Spectre? Yes. You should play it with us. I might try help on recent. Uh, I'm giving it a go. Uh, the problem I've been having is my most recent um, colony has absolutely no steel on the map whatsoever that I can find. You're almost better off starting over, unfortunately. The hares have gone mad. But the thing is, I don't want to start over because the map itself, like the actual layout, is fantastic. Oh, that's right. That's the one with the like the one by one entrance to a completely secure area. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a tough pickle because you're going to be so set back technology wise without any steel until you get traders that have a decent supply of it that you can get 
enough to get up and going and not have to worry about needing steel. And when I can find the traders that will actually fucking buy the gold I have. I'm sitting on a shit ton of gold, but I can't fucking sell any of it. Oh, I found a weakness in my fire design. Wooden door. Ooh, yeah. Definitely uh, when your exterior door to be stone. Not even steel, because steel is 40% um, flammable. Yeah. So what I've always done is I'll just make a fire break using flooring, like the fucking steel, concrete type. Yeah, I, I have that around my perimeter wall to my north, but because I've been expanding, I haven't bothered making the one around my uh, uh, main base. But one thing that you could do now under is you could keep the wooden door, but just put a concrete patio in front of it so the flames can't get to the wooden no, door. No, it's not, it's not my base that it's hitting. It's, it's the fire's all around my geothermal power unit. And that had a wooden oh. door, but stone walls. Oops. Yeah, it happens. So it's also burning the... Uh conduit I laid. I need to put a fire break around the conduit. Oh, you didn't have any protection for your conduit? No, I didn't think of it. You should be able to just put a single wall over that. You don't need to build it on both sides. If it's under the, or inside the stone wall, essentially, it should be. Able to. Right, it's more, I don't want to put a, like, it's, it's a far enough away from my walls that I don't want to put. Oh, it's, it's like an out, out, out building? Yeah, it's an out building. I'm just gonna put flooring what? over it. I got no, slate. No, that won't do anything. Yeah, it will. If I put flooring in, in enough distance around it as a buffer, the oh, fire can't okay, get to I it. Okay. I thought you meant just like putting one tile of flooring above. No, I have like, put I have to put it three to a side. <laughs> yep. But I was gonna say another thing you could do is build the you know wall all the way down the conduit and then put you know doors staggered up and down it. That way your colonists can still pass through it, like it's not there, essentially, and then enemies would have to go around that as an obstacle, essentially. Yeah, that was an idea, but I'm just going to throw some stone down on top of it. It's not a big deal. Yeah. I got plenty of stone because I'm starting to carve into a mountain. Oh, yeah, you'll thank never you, have a Space chance. Jesus. 152 um, bars of chocolate just dropped in the cargo pods. Well, there you go. And the rain has started, so all the fire is out. It only burned like a third of the map. I love it when that happens. It's less long to cut. Yeah, it's like Christmas. <laughs> you got chocolate from the sky, and then it should have snowed probably. And all the trees, and all the trees burned. Yeah. Standard American Christmas. Can't have a good Christmas without a house fire from a Christmas tree overloaded with lights. Although Mistbusters tested that, that that was a funny episode. If you ever haven't seen that one. No. What was it? Mistbusters, they tested the uh, setting a artificial tree, a regular tree, and a couple other things. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was crazy. They had a whole bunch of like 150 watt light bulbs on one tree just to get it to ignite. <laughs> Maybe not 150 watt. I don't remember what they were, but they were freaking hot bulbs. Why? Okay, I don't understand my pawns. They have all of this storage space. That is right, like across the hallway from the, the kitchen. Well, through the um, I don't know crafting room, and then through my textile storage room, and then freezer. 
They have all of the corn stored on the opposite end of a long, skinny freezer. <laughs> like it's another 50 tiles round trip to get a piece of, uh, to get some corn. Fortunately, I have the close freezer that's like five steps away from my kitchen. And that one has the higher priority for its storage. So they just keep one by one shuffling the pile of corn into that freezer. <laughs> Yeah, because the cooks will always pull from the closest tile, which is nice. It would be would be entertaining if they didn't have that and just randomly picked a pile. Oh, you have a freezer that's 600 tiles away? I'm going to go grab some corn. I'll be back <laughs> tomorrow. Boomalope self-tamed. And it's another female. Perfect. I have three female Boomalopes that have all self-tamed randomly across time. <laughs> nice. Well, the thing is, is like, I want to kind of just want to tame all the females and not get any males. But at the same time, it's like, I guess with the manager mod, it's not so bad. But then the killing of said Boomalopes is a little tricky. But then again, with the manager mod, you can split the males and females. So you could breed up to a certain point and then have them escorted away from each other so they don't make no more babies. Yep. I don't get why it notifies me of somebody who is starving because they're sleeping. Not my problem. When he wakes up, he will eat. It's not, it's not a big deal. It's not like he's down somewhere. He's, he's just fucking sleeping. Like, Jesus. <laughs> These colonists are starving. Ida, get them some food. Ida's fucking sleeping! <laughs> Does I have a tapeworm or something? No, just normal. Has absolutely nothing wrong with him. No food poisoning, no tapeworm, no nothing. No um, nanites or what any of the stuff that affects how much food they eat. Or gutworm, that's what they're called in this game. No, none of that. Just the fact that his food bar is empty and he is asleep. I'm getting a notification saying this person is starving. It's like... Yeah, that happens to me too. Or when they're on like a daze or something. Yeah. Well, that one's understandable because, well, they're in a mental break state, so that was kind of your fault. It's not my fault he got addicted to Psychite and then we, and then we <laughs> ran out of Psychite tea. Yes, it's the grower's fault. It, it's the plant's fault. They didn't grow fast enough. They drank all the tea before. <laughs> um, so should I expand my brewery? I would need to expand my brewing fields, but I'm totally up for it. What do you guys think? More beer? More beer. I well, more beer. Actually, that yeah. kind of makes me want to get more beer. Yeah, I'm gonna get more beer. Well, I'm gonna do it, guys. I'm gonna do it. He's a madman. I mean, I have all this room right above the bedrooms here, so... Oh, I actually have way more than that, too, because I have all of this that can get mined out, too. I mean, if I'm going to go all in, I might as well, right? I mean, I could probably fit another, let's see. With the Stardew Valley setup, where you have the one tile in between with two, you know, barrels. Because I still think like that when I play stuff, so that I always like like leaving the walking path. Even though in um, Moon World, you can literally pile everything and have no tiles to walk on, and they'll literally just walk over each brewing barrel to get to the next one. They don't care about stuff like that. But for me, aesthetics. If I maintain that build profile, I could get about probably 100 barrels in the space I have that I'm expanding to. So I would need another 
Well, basically my hay field down here would have to... Oh, wait, no, I got that big... Oh, no, that is the big one. Whoops. Um, yeah, we'll turn this into hops. More hops. But I'm going to need a bigger fridge now. <laughs> ah, things to do, people to shoot. Uh, hmm, a pyromaniac that's incapable of firefighting. That's a given with pyromaniacs. Yeah. In, in a base that's 80% wood. Yeah. What could possibly go wrong? He gets, that's the thing, Spectres, pyromaniacs don't just start fires when they're mad. They do it when they're extremely happy, as in, like, when they're giddy, they're like, hey, I'm going to start some fucking fires, because I have two pyromaniacs. It's loads of fun. <laughs> Fortunately, I have enough pawns that the fires don't really spread too much, because I have 38 pawns in this base. With two pyromaniacs, that they can typically keep up, no problem. But it's still, like, when I was first starting, because, um... What's his fucking name? Squint. Squint was one of my first pawns. Like, in my first six pawns that I had, he was one of the first ones I recruited, because he had an amazing... I want to say it was construction and i was like okay i'll put up with the pyromaniac and it was okay except for the one time that he started a fire when half my people were down because <laughs> he had he had a mood break from the last raid that we had and he had food poisoning and he's like i'm gonna start shit on fire and i was like i only have two other pawns please don't <laughs> <laughs> good times but um Oh, he had um, double passion in plants. That's why I grabbed him. And then he got turned into my main construction guy for some reason. <laughs> and he was also a good doctor. So I grabbed him. Oh, and he's psychically sensitive. That's one of the reasons he kept breaking. He has a plus 40 uh, psychic sensitivity. So, yeah, pyromaniacs are okay as long as they're not psychic sensitive or psychically sensitive. Yeah, I can read. I can read words. God fucking damn it. Insects? No, one of my columns decided to go feral on me. Oh, give up? Uh, no, the, uh, what do you call Wild it? Man? Yeah, well, they went wild. Oh, yeah, you have to capture them and re-recruit them. There is no quick way through that one. So rescue won't work? Um, no. If they're no longer... If they went wild, they're, yeah, they're officially not a part of your colony anymore. So yeah. you have to capture them and then re-recruit them. Same with, um, give up. That's I don't know if you've gotten that one yet. Nope, not yet. Okay, give up, they'll just walk to the edge of the map and disappear. If you arrest them before they get to the edge, you can re-recruit them, and they you know, they won't have any move to buff for giving up. And they'll have catharsis while you're trying to recruit them. So that's one to look out for. Like, if you see the give up, pause the game and find the pawn and immediately arrest them. Because if they get to the edge of the map, you, you can't do anything. Especially, I had a, uh, one of my best pawns do that right away in the beginning. They were good at constructing... Um, crafting, arts, and plants. And they had double passion in construction. I think that was one of the yeah, few that I had. Yeah, this was Run that. Wild. Yeah, Run Wild. That one's that one's not as bad, because you can just pick them back up and... Yeah, I, had a, right? I had to go that's shank a bitch, but uh, now I can recruit her. Yeah, that's, um, that's an event. You can actually have a wild man wanders into the map. No, 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 it's not this one. This was a former colonist, had a psychic yeah, yeah, break. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, run wild. And yes, I know what you're talking about, about with the wild men. You've had that? Yeah, I thought oh, yeah, I've had a like, bunch of them. What the fuck is that? That was a new one to me. I was like, what the fuck is that? Okay, yep. that's different. <laughs> it, it's because they're in psychite withdrawal. Apparently, psychite withdrawal is actually pretty bad. Go figure. Yep. That's why I, um, with the two that are psychopaths, I cut their legs off. I gave them pig legs, and then with extended prosthetics, I can actually remove the pig legs. <laughs> actually, that might be base game. I'm not sure. But anyway, so yeah, they basically, they're sitting in the hospital beds, just going through their withdrawals. <laughs> they can't do anything. <laughs> they can't even move for a break. So. If you lost your, uh, your walking privilege. 
Yeah, pretty much. And then once, you know, once I do um, get around to recruiting them, I'll just put bionic legs on them after they're recruited. And then they'll be fine. I love the game mechanics in this game. If you had a kid who had robot legs and, like, they, they like, got in trouble with school or something and you wanted to ground them, would you take away their... Um... No. Um, I think I would take them with the batteries sure for their legs. legs. I'm pretty sure that's classified as a hate crime. <laughs> that's why you take away the batteries, then they don't know the legs aren't gonna work. Oh, boy. No, it's true, actually. Like, like my parents stole my charger. It doesn't sound nearly as bad as my parents stole my uh -huh. I am smart. I mean, not everybody would agree with that statement, but not much I can do about it. The boom rats have gone mad. Ooh, that's, uh, deal with that with ranged and care. I can't. You have no ranged people? No, they they rushed my ranged person that's left. Every, everybody else who's ranged is down or in prison at the moment. <laughs> this is why I make it a point to purge the herds uh, uh, off the map with uh, free... But you can still have the event where they come in off the edge of the map. And you can have, you have, yeah, like, you can have boom ramps and boom lopes. I've had herds of boom lopes, like, because of my colony size, I've had herds of boom lopes that were, like, 20 strong come in. It's like, oh, shit. Fortunately, they were on, like, the other, like, the upper north, um, which edge is that? That would be the, I think, brain work west, upper west edge, which is literally one of the furthest points from the main entrance to my base, which is where they headed. So they headed down and around and up. So I had plenty of time to prepare, but if they came in from the south, they boop, go right up. I will be right back. Yeah, and my melee guy is on, on fire. Because of the boom rats. So they're like explosive rats. Yes, they're rats that explode when they die. Oh, for fuck's sake, he's attacking my hospital. No, 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 don't fucking go outside, you moron! <laughs> There's a rat in my hospital! God damn it! <laughs> These fuckers are gonna blow everyone up in the hospital! I had to activate push to talk, that's why I was muted. <laughs> I'm back. Under, I just had a great idea. What was that? I think you can make a CR1 or 2 creature very similar to a boomalo. <laughs> or a boom rat. Like a boom rat, like it packs a three. Just put like five groups of them. Mm. Oof. <laughs> gonna, I have to carry the boom rat out of my base so that it can die in peace. <laughs> just make an animal sleeping spot and rescue it? Yeah. And then I just left uh, it there. I take it this is some kind of animal with natural explosives in it? Yeah. Yes. No, they're, they're talking about Mother fucker. Yeah, they're these yellowish things. They're brown and yellow, and they uh, they explode when they die. Mm. They don't deal fire damage or anything along those lines, but when they die, they explode. 
I think the boom rest is like what uh you just had a bunch of what like radius three or four for them i i no i had six of them show up you don't know their explosion radius when oh uh, three yeah three boom boom will explosion radius is like eight actually i could go find out real quick there's a couple on the map hang on it's like an entire cow full of gasoline pretty much yes yeah <laughs> the boom rats are basically rats full of gasoline Nah, they're like cats. They're pretty big rats. Yeah, they're big. They're giant rats full of gasoline. They explode. Explosives of unusual size. Yes, they're explosives of unusual size. And I just lost a colonist because of them. Wow. Gilbert, did you see what I posted in chat? Which thing? In that in D&D, I just posted I missed the thing the lizard posted earlier, and like, I had to make something to respond. I, I, oh, I just oh, lost yeah, yeah, my, my secondary doctor. Yeah. To, to a fucking exploding rat. Oh, that's rough. My hospital has blood all over the floors. And puke. And dirt. Why do you keep insisting on colonizing Death World? This is normal Rimworld. Yeah, this this isn't Death World. Death World's a lot harder than this. Oh, great. And my other doctor just got an infection. Turn on self-tend. Oh, I did. I always have, when I have doctors, I always turn on self-tend for them so that they don't get fucked. You know that used to not be a thing? I'm sure. Yeah, Gilbert, I'm putting in the um, D and D chat right now. What a uh, boomalope explosion radius looks like. The big one, the cow. Give it a minute. So I'm I'm now down to six. Well. Really, for fuck's sake. Oh, that seems pretty big. I, I'm down to five active colonists, one of whom is on a smoke leaf binge, one of whom is um, currently in prison. Yeah, this, this is not going well. As long as you have one good social person left, you should be able to recruit them relatively easy. What's she she was my you? primary social person. Oof. I have more. I have more. Um, I have someone with a seven. She was a nine. Okay. What's your recruit difficulty? That wasn't that high. Uh, recruit difficulty, 65%. That's she, not terrible. No, it's not terrible. It's just it's going to take a while. What's the resistance? 25. Oh, yeah. You'll have her recruited in a couple days. Yeah. Well, you no, it won't be a couple days because... I have no one to go actually fucking talk to her because, you know, half the colony's laid up. Oof. Hey, more lovers, Jess and Pacer. How many wives or husbands have you had, Pacer? This is like the second or third. You're alone digging me in your colony? No, the other ones died. Died. Not, not killed, died. Well, Daryl was friendly fire. And I was about to make a space Mormons joke, but no one. <laughs> oh, that would be a fun mod to have. Mormons relationships. <laughs> Poly relationships. Oh god, that would be so insane. Yeah. yeah the is... mod is that you only get one pawn and he has the entire planet to himself. Mm hmm. It is so fucking weird how much Mormons show up in sci-fi. Like, I don't, I don't understand. I'm not sure I follow. Please explain. Like, The Expanse has fucking Mormons in it. Doom has Mormons. It's like... 
I don't know. This is weird. I recall Orson Scott cards in Mormon. Yeah, so there you go. Worshipping their heathen god, Mormos. Mormos. As I recall, Mormons are a Christian subsect, right? Yeah, I know. I'm making I'm making a joke here. Actually, I know a shit ton of Mormons. I know Aren't you from Mormon County? But I've never really talked to them about what being a Mormon is. I've just generally understood it as it's some kind of uh, subgroup of Christianity. And every single Mormon I know has been a very, very responsible person. Yeah, that sounds about right. Almost. Yeah, I guess it's weird to me, because we don't really have them up here. Like, it's more of a West thing. Yeah, there was a Mormon church, uh, I don't know, like, two miles up the road from my house, if that. So... They always came door to door, and then when I was living at my parents' place by myself, when they, you know, bought their other house, and I was living there as a tenant, paying them rent, and um, they they come up to that, you know, come to the house every, you know, two or three months and do their whole pitch and everything like that, and I I got sick of it to the point where I answered the door in my boxes and I was like, I am agnostic, can you please leave me alone? <laughs> I'm sure that worked. They didn't come back. I mean, at least with the Mormons, the Mormons are polite, and if you ask them to stop, in my no, this was after three or four times stop. of telling them I wasn't interested, and they would keep coming back. Oh, that's Jehovah's Witnesses. You can never get those fuckers off. At least the Mormons in my area, super respectful. If you're not interested, they totally get it. They must have like a map in their church. They just X off the houses that aren't interested. <laughs> All right, we can't go here. <laughs> ah, the bacon farm is started. Yay. And my, and my doctor just collapsed because of his infection. There is now no one with actual medical skill left awake. That's not good. Indeed. Is there anyone who can dig that's left awake? Dig? Yeah. Well, you better let him uh, start getting to work on those graves then. I have two open <laughs> graves. No, no, not not going to uh God damn it, Mike, my, my goddamn doctor just died. And let me guess, the armor is now tainted because he was wearing it when he died. Along with the that. goddamn, yeah, along with the goddamn hyperweave pants and synth thread button-down shirts, he was one of my originals. Oof. Well, you can always hope for the man in black if everybody goes down. Yeah, fortunately, it's not to that point yet. I still have four colonists remaining, though one of them is currently in a daze, and one's in prison. Or is that not? That's not counting prison. that one. Because I technically have to re-recruit her. And the cold snap just killed off the farm. Bet you're glad you got that airdrop of potatoes. Food, I'm fine. I, I have 64 meals, 300 potatoes, 50 berries, and 600 meat stored up. That's not bad. Nah, it's not bad. I'd light a campfire in the prison, though, to keep to keep my uh, wayward um, oh, person. Oh, 
Yeah. yeah. It's too cold to leave him out there because my prison's technically in an outhouse. I don't have it connected to the main fortress. Oh, joy. And she immediately went berserk. Oof. Time to go shank a bitch again. Oh boy. So I have the thing with the manager set up to auto tame wild boars, and a herd of like 20 of them came onto the map. I was like, oh cool. Well, guess what just happened? Wild boar revenge due to a failed tame chance, and there's six pawns out there. Woohoo! So many piggies. Well, I guess I'm getting to start on that bacon early. I did not want to have to use my Resurrect Serum for something so stupid. So remember how I was dealing with the angry pigs? Yeah. Well, I had a guy in a forward position behind a wall, and the pigs moved just so the turrets were basically shooting at a straight line and the pawn was in that gunfire. Guess who died without a stomach? Oof. Yeah, basically one shot it. Which is really annoying because I think a bullet through the stomach would be non fatal, but apparently it was uh, not. No, that, that's right? actually, with, without modern medicine, that's actually really bad. But it instantly killed him? Like, I can't even tend to him? Um, in real life, you've got, you've got a couple hours. Yeah, I'm a 14.5 millimeter bullet. 
I'm not an EMT, but even with modern medicine, like the stomach is one of the worst places you can get shot, both in terms of pain and with. Yeah, gut wounds tend to be slow and painful. What about with um, a 14.5 millimeter bullet? Does that make a difference? Well, the stomach's gone at that point. <laughs> it is. Yeah. That's literally what it that, says right now. Yeah, that that sounds like you shot a self-propelled can of Red Bull into his gut. Mm. Red Bull gives you a fucking hole in your head. And it was Squint, too, one of my... Uh... I mean, I could let him die because he was a pyro, and then I would have one less pyro to deal with, but he was also one of my original early-on pawns, so it's like, I don't want to kill him. Yeah, this is the um, the the shot. Read, uh, read it. It's hilarious. <laughs> Hang on, it's loading. Really? God damn these weak ass colonists. So I I had like a transport pod before all this shit went down, and I and I rescued the person. Well, obviously they decided to leave as people were bleeding all over her in the hospital. You know, I literally the colony halved in size while she was here. So she left. She healed up. She left. As she was walking to the edge of the map during this cold snap, she died of hypothermia. <laughs> Oh shit, and I had the two colonists way out there. I mean, I think they're just seven hours, six hours. Yeah, that's plenty of time. Let me see how much sleep have you got. You've gotten plenty. You're on the rescue duty. my resurrect on him. Damn it, I didn't want to. <laughs> Just got it, too. Excited, because it's like the third one I've got. I use the other ones pretty much right away, too, because it always seems to be conveniently timed that you get the pawn, and then they die. Or you get the resurrect serum, and then you need to use it. That's the read up for the uh, bullet. Kind of amusing because it says with skill. <laughs> hey, a hostile po um, pirate just uh, crash landed. I need to capture her. Who's my fucking. But she doesn't have bad skills either. Too smart, fast walker, nothing incapable. Eight in plant, seven in crafting. Ooh, good crafters are always nice. Yeah. Especially with the drug thing. Four in medical, so she would actually end up being the new medic. Wait, did you just say four medical? Yeah, and that makes her the best one in the actual uh, <laughs> fucking thing. Yeah. Oh, man. I really didn't want to use that. Not for... I should say, I didn't want to use it for something so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I always like them because they're handy because you can get rid of all of the mood debuffs and all that stuff from the dead mm -hmm. spouse and dead friends and colonists died and all that stuff. But it's just like, 
for a bunch of pigs that he could have just been inside and the turrets would have taken care of. But no, I had to move him to a forward position. There goes a couple thousand silver. Oh my god. Low medicine. You have 69 medicine in storage. I'm pretty sure with 38 colonists, I am good. <laughs> Considering my defensive setup. Seriously, now there's plague on the fucking boomalopes. That's actually not that big of a deal. It is when I don't have people to spare. No, like, even without tending, usually plagues aren't that fatal. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're, I mean, it depends. I don't know. For me, typically, I don't really seem to mind it, even in early game, without many handlers. It doesn't ever seem to be, like, a major, like, I lose the entire herd or anything. So, he just destroyed a fucking god damn it. Colin suddenly just went on a tantrum uh, and destroyed a stack of 150 ambrosia. Ooh, that's ooh. Yeah. I'm just going to be upset when Shadow dies. That's what I really should be saving my mech. My, uh, resurrect mech for. Shooting 14, melee 10, construction 13, mining 17, cooking 2, plants 3, animal 11, crafting 4, artist 4, medical 14, social 6, intellect 11. So yeah, he's pretty good to have around. And he only has transhumanist and kind for his traits. And he's got the full body of bionics. So he gets a positive 13 all the time. And he's kind, so he's great with every colonist. So yeah, no, I don't want him to die. And he's pretty much the one that I pick for, like, oh, um, let's go shoot at Boomalopes and see how much of a blast radius they make. <laughs>
Yeah, that, that whole plague thing. Not so good for you? Male boomalobe just exploded. Oh, I suppose the boomalobes when they die, yeah. I know oh, the other one's breeding pair. The other one pregnant by chance or no? Yes, middle stage. Well, you might get a boy out of it, and then Hopefully. the boy, the boy can have sex with the mommy, and yep, that's not weird. <laughs> not weird at all for you. Well, I mean, it is better than if you think about the Lord Fortress breeding cats for soap. <laughs> Who didn't do that? Uh, that's the one thing I figured out. <laughs> soap is good. Soap is good, yes. Oh, hey, a group of tribesmen are attacking. Well, at least it's easier prey. Yeah, with my three actual military guys. What's the percentage on that other boomalo for the uh, plague? There are none. Oh, okay, that's good. So it didn't completely fuck you. <laughs> Indeed. An optimist with an eight medical. Hey, I found someone else to recruit. Yeah, that's good. Positive mood boost all the time and a good doctor. Mm -hmm. There's blood all over my base. Yep, one of those days. Yep. Like, everything was going great, and then just suddenly, for no fucking reason, everything went the shit. Boom rats. Yeah, the, the boom rats attacked, yes. It wasn't a fucking pirate siege or anything like that, no, it was from fucking boom rats that just bum rushed my, my uh, riflemen. all wonderful until the boom rat nation attacked. Now oh, it looks like that person that went wild's gonna die. Got an infection. Oh. 
That's how I lost my last doctor. He died of an infection. What about well, the doctors? <laughs> well, this person was a yeah. Actually, this this person was also a doctor. I mean, the reason that the she keep, got an infection because she keeps going fucking berserk. Like every like every time she wakes up, she's like, "All right, I'm, I'm going to continue going berserk," and the wardens end up come coming and have to you know stab a bitch and. Yep, and then they have pain debuff, and then they get go to circus and yeah, 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 back and forth. Another fucking raid. Wow. Let, let's see, knife guy, knife guy, club guy. You know, at least, at least it's not, you know, five grenadiers like that one time after I had a bunch of shit happen. What do you have your difficulty on? Medium. Randy? Yeah. Randy doesn't like you. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> Holy fuck, Randy doesn't like you. For Randy, back back. That's, that's great. I gotta use that. Randy is great. Yeah, except when, except when they aren't. Yeah, Randy Random is, uh... Yeah. And he can be random. I literally, like I said, I've had three drop pods in a row that were all food when I didn't need food. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's just like, here's some food. Cool, thanks. Yeah, Here's well, I don't like the other one because all yeah. it does is it keeps ramping up the difficulty until it breaks. It's guaranteed. It's like, it, it's not actually truly random. It just decides to fuck you eventually. Yeah, both Cassandra and, uh, I don't know. The and other Phoebe, user, yeah. User. Phoebe. Well, is, Phoebe. This is, actually, is, that, is that the actual game mechanic? I thought you just made that. No. No, you you picked this. They're they called called narrators. The, yeah, the storyteller narrator or something. Oh, yeah, I think I've heard about that. Yeah, that's they cool. just fucking stabbed my goddamn pet raccoon to death. Well, I guess you're having raccoon shish kebabs for dinner. And two of my colonists really? have come down with fibrous mechanites. That's a really cool concept one... for a difficulty mechanic. Really. Yeah. Um, fibrous mechanite is a win some, lose some scenario. Um, they get a mood to buff for pain, but they work faster. So that one's that one's kind of a neutral because they have the constant mood debuff, which you really don't need right now, and they work faster, which you really don't need right now. So you just need people who can work consistently. I'm back. Welcome back. How long have you been gone? Like a few minutes. Oh. I didn't hear you leave earlier. That's why I was. Oh. This is the customarily. Oh, shit, I messed that up. This is the part where we customarily ask what you. So I, I have four colonists active. Three of them are now laid up in the hospital. I have one person working. Well, I think you'll be good for raids. Oh, and the one person that's working is incapable of violence. I think you'll be good for raids. I mean, it's Randy. They could just throw another raid at me just because. I haven't even no. researched, um, which, which we call it? Uh, oh, hypothermia. Shit. Um, I haven't even researched gun turrets yet. I haven't had a chance. Yep. You've been so busy dig jiggling everything you're on. Well, like, I'm at blowback operation. Gun turrets is the next thing after this. That'll, that'll help. That'll honestly help what I can you know, get some automated defenses around some shit.
You know, my favorite computer term has got to be wardrobe. <laughs> Your favorite computer term is what? War driving. War driving. War driving is basically where you go around like looking for uh, open or unsecure Wi-Fi hotspots in your car. Oh. Like that's its official name. That's funny. I never knew there was a term for it, but I've done that before. There's a guy out in the west, I don't know if it was, not Seattle, no, um, maybe it was California. He built a drone that did it. That also has a name, that is War Droning. God. And then the same guy built... On top of this drone, he built one that could literally go right through um, the normal wireless securities. Like, it had built-in hacking software to go right through the Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can script you know, that. They... Yeah. I think my favorite might be script kitties, because it just sounds... Script kitties? Yeah, script kitties. You know, like, people who are generally inexperienced with computers, but just like get pre-made scripts from other people who are like better at it and then use it to cheat in online. Oh. Yeah. That is not what I was thinking. No. What did you think it was like cast that direct Hollywood movies or something? Nope. <laughs> Yeah, a person who uses existing computer scripts or code to hack into computers lacking the expertise to write the There you go. That's funny. Practice originates in, uh, like, the, uh, the really fucking old phone freaking practice of war dialing. That's apparently named after the Matthew Broderick film War Games. Shall we play a game? And what is the purpose of all this? Well, war dialing used to be a thing you could do to try and get free long distance phone calls or to try and probe, uh, probe modems. Uh, war driving is when you're too fucking broke to have your own internet. Mm. So you're poking around, seeing if you can find somebody who left theirs open. I'm kind of doing that at work, actually, but, like, by accident. I had to bump my plant cutting up for everybody, because there's definitely not enough plant cutting to get done. Ever since I installed the mod that adds all of the subcategories under, I've had to start retweaking stuff. <laughs> Mm -hmm. See, something like that would be nice to have early on when you could, you know, have a system already established how you want the, you know, pattern for different pawns. But when you have 38 of them and you have to redo it all, <laughs> it's a lot of work. And it's really easy to lose your place. The real advantage is it means you have access to a wireless network and the internet on a device that has no connection to your name whatsoever. Oh yeah, there you go. Sleepy, man. 
Starbucks Wi-Fi. Yeah, the way I get Wi-Fi at work is that the building we're working on is owned by um by a large university. And it turns out they use like the same like the same whatever to set up their network as the university that I go to, which is nowhere near there. But what that means is that I can log into it with my password from a different school and use their Wi Fi. Nice. Yeah. Like I'm amazed that that actually works, because it feels like it shouldn't. Like, it's a completely different school in a different part of the state. Like, this is weird. No, I understand what you're saying. With the, yeah, the same handshake software, and basically they would set up the exact same way. Yeah, like... If any, if any of you, if any of you are familiar with Eater Rome, it's. A... I think that would be Under's ballpark. I don't travel. Yeah. To see all the different what? Sorry, what? I'm literally trying not to have my thing fall apart on me. So, what did you guys say? No, well, I'm just to... so no, 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 don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah. So I was talking about how like the way I'm getting Wi-Fi at work right now is that the um. The building that we're working on is owned by a large university, and they use, I guess, the same handshake software for their Wi-Fi as the school that I go to, even though they're nowhere near each other. Which means that I can use their Wi-Fi using my password from a completely different... Like they have in hotels, the, the handshake program? Yeah. yeah. That's what I call it. I don't know what its official name is, but I've always called that handshake software. That because sounds like it would be what it's called. Yeah, you have to shake your hand and be like, all right, yep, yep, I, I know, I'm using your Wi-Fi, got it, got it, okay, can we stop shaking our hands now? Can I log in? Thanks. Yeah, the Spectrum business has the um, Wi-Fi hotspot stuff like that with the handshake software. Mm -hmm. That is just so annoying, because one of our bars had spectrum internet and they had normal with a wi-fi router and then spectrum oh no they had at&t and me and my boss talked them out of at&t because at&t is so annoying to work with for like camera systems and security systems and they were having troubles with the camera system since at&t changed i don't know what something and so he switched to spectrum and spectrum sold him on the hotspot thing well, the hotspot thing is the most annoying thing in the world because you don't just walk into the bar and your Wi-Fi connects. You have to do the handshake every time you fucking show up. And so I talk to him and I'm like, you realize how stupid this is, right? You should be able to have Wi-Fi without having the handshake software. It's not fucking a hotel. Like, you're your own business. If you have to put your own router up, I'll go to Best Buy and buy you one. <laughs> like, Yeah, that's really weird. Yeah, that's... Spectrum tries to sell it. That's the thing. Yeah. No, but the way I'm, like, the way I did this at work, like, wasn't even on purpose. Like, I just came into work, and I looked at what my Wi-Fi was on, and it was like, oh, I'm on Edu Room, just like at school. And, like, I didn't even have to log in. It remembered oh, the network, they had the even same. though I was, yeah, it's the exact same thing. I didn't have to do anything. Like, it just oh, happened. Okay. Up. you're talking about the SSID. That's totally different. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Yeah, no, I yeah. didn't have to do anything. It remembered the network, even though it was in a completely different... A fucking another wild boar revenge there? 2%! Fuck off! Again, group attack. Ugh, this is so annoying. Alright, I have to change the fucking bills so that they stop taming them. So I figured, you know, they're on my map infrequently that taming them wouldn't be that big of a deal. Well, apparently it is. All right, on to researching gun turrets. The only thing is with the, uh, fucking hell. How many pawns I have and having the manager mod part open, it's really choppy. Like, just <laughs> opening the manager bills. Mm-hmm. Like, it freezes the game. Like, I'm literally at one frame per second right now. Boomer has gotten a corpse even. obsession. Oh, that one's annoying. They pull corpses out. Yeah. 
<laughs> There's part of the goddamn dining room table. Yep. <laughs> we just bring it to the fucking eating area and just set it down. It's like, dude, fuck. And then he pulls out a meal and eats it on the corpse. Oh, now, uh, Garador is also having a corpse. He's going to exhume a different corpse and bring it as well. Oh boy. At least the Mega Sloth is capable of burying bodies. True. Okay, how long do you have? Three hours. Okay, I guess we're going to have to use the tunnel. God damn it. Well, what's funny is I was building more bedrooms. So I'm like, you know, I'm running out of bedrooms. I need to expand. I guess I don't need to do that anymore. No, no, you don't. <laughs> Just forbidding all the doors to my kill box. I don't know, it looks like it. No, oh, yeah, I got them all. Okay, never mind, don't have to do that. Oh, there's one straggler. But he's injured. So my, I, I built my jail doors out of uranium. Well. It's good use for uranium. They can't really break that now. Right? I mean, granted, the same torch with a wooden door scenario, they'll eventually get through. Yeah. But it gives, look, they were breaking the wooden door down before my warden could get there to stab someone. So now they have a little more time to show up and then stab them before they break down my jail. Because I couldn't recapture them because the, there's no door on the uh, prison. Yep. I ended up having That's to repurpose was... my barracks as a prison just because they kept breaking down the mm -hmm. door. I need to transfer them between two different prisons, basically, when that happens. Yeah, I always have a buffer door. That at least give me time. But uranium probably would work, too. <laughs> well, I don't have any other use for it right at the moment. Can't use it to make tank shells. With what tank? I guess. A wild boar has gone mad. Wonderful. Careful, those guys are pretty dangerous. I know. <laughs> I'm summoning I'm the army. Well, we had to deal with fucking 30 of them, so... Well, I got people in plate mail taking it on. Yeah, it died. Jeez. Yeah, the guy that had... The guy that took that torso, or uh, stomach shot... He had marine armor on. Oof. Yeah. Those 14 millimeters are not something to fuck with. <laughs> yeah, these guys were just in flak jackets and plate mail that I made. And, um... <laughs> Caravan request. Please bring us 41 knives. <laughs> in return, we'll give you all sorts of other shit that you can't really spare to call us to send us. But fuck you. We'll, we'll tell you what we're not going to send you. Yeah, the drop pods are nice for stuff like that. You'll get there eventually under one of these colonies. <laughs> one of these colonies will not just suddenly yeah, will not just suffer from sudden colony collapse syndrome. Yep. But I've almost finished researching uh, turrets, so that'll be nice when those are finished. Yeah, that does negate a lot of the worry about raids. Just even having one or two of them up because that's free damage.
So who the fuck is on my animal handling that's freaking trying to go out there and get these fuckers with shitty freaking skill? Four? Okay, yeah, you're no longer allowed to recruit animals. Five? Yeah, you can fuck off. Six? Eh, we're getting there. Six? Eh, we're getting there. Six? Eh, seven? Well, I got enough. Okay, yeah, we'll get rid of the seven. The rest are eight and higher, so I have... Eight pawns that can hopefully tame animals without the entire herd turning on them. Oof. Franklin, you poor man. Your right arm was removed by the pigs. Oof. And the mechanical arm. And it's, uh, it's no more. Yeah, I bet. At least, it, oh, who was that that ran past him? Loki, can you rescue? You can. Can you please rescue him? Thank you. Yeah, he went down again. <laughs> I stabilized him, but wasn't enough. Oh, look, some elephants. All right, mini tour time. I think it's so funny that I openly challenge um, elephants in open combat, but hogs? No, no, I'm good. I'll let the turrets handle them. Because combat extended takes in target size into account. Mm. So elephants are much easier to hit. <laughs> Holy shit, she is punching a uranium door down? 50% already? Oof. What the fuck? I mean, I told you it'll buy you time. I didn't say it would buy you a lot. <laughs> you should What's be able to get there. Yep, with everybody's hands. Who's he keeping in his jail? Captain Goddamn America? No, she's a counselor. <laughs> she was my primary me uh, um she was my primary doctor and negotiator. And she's in jail. Well, right. she uh, had a. She was. A, she's addicted to uh, psychite. Yeah. And I ran out of psychite because of the boom rats. The the cook got blown up, and I didn't realize it for a little bit. So I ran out of psychite tea. So she then went and had a uh, break, where she tur she basically went feral and you know quit the colony. But at least she's still on the map. Yeah, she stayed on the map. She was just like a wild man. And so I had to capture her and throw her in prison. Well, because of the addiction, she constantly has like a zero mood. Cause she's in withdrawal. Yeah. Well, nothing like the whole, like, lock yourself in a room. Right, they do that too, but this, this particular one wasn't that. Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh, I see the problem. Okay. My god, my, my backup doctor just, uh, fuck, just went on a uh, sabbatical. Oops. And as a result, she died after she tried to, she nearly busted down a uranium door with her fists, and then the security showed up. With a plasteel knife. She died of blood loss. Oh, that sucks. Literally, let's see, her right clavicle cracked with a knife. Torso cut with a knife. Right shoulder cut with a knife. Right arm cut with a knife. Le left lung cut with a knife. Right foot cut with a knife. Right fourth toe cut off fresh from a knife. Psychite tolerance. Wow. Oh. Psychite addiction. Was that? Um, fibrous mechanites. And, uh, she died of blood loss. Fibrous mechanites help with the blood loss. They actually increase blood pumping rate. They make it worse, you mean? Yes, they make blood loss worse. Yeah. So, yeah, she just died in prison. 
my best doctor and negotiator went feral and then died in prison. And now her body goes in the crematorium. Well, my uh, two psychopaths, one of them is at 80 and 82 for their two addictions. But I now have four turrets set up at my front door. There you go. Now that's nice. And the other psychopath is at 93, 91 for their withdrawals. Awesome. Almost, almost there. I can recruit them soon. And the resistance is 17 and 47. Oh, 47 is going to take a bit to get down. Oh, now we're running low on food. Yeah, I was going to say that's going to come up eventually. At <laughs> the rate that your, your shit's going for you. playthrough I was playing and I had like I think six or seven pawns and I had a good base going and then I decided to attack a thrumbo <laughs> <laughs> I did not have a good base after that because that motherfucker goes right through the walls like they're not even there <laughs> and uh, I think I had one pawn at the end of all that that actually made it through <laughs> In that colony then died, yeah. That was that was good times. Oh wonderful! A cargo pod full of one hundred and ninety-four psychoid leaves. <laughs> Remember how I said that everyone's addicted to psychite tea because of uh, you know the necessary stimulants for it? Well, now you can go back to the production. A little too late. But... Well, I have psych. Like, I've rebuilt up my psychite, uh, psychite tea uh, thing. Oh, so you don't need it anymore? Well, I don't need the like. I had, I still had a hundred and twenty leaves in my freezer. I had psychite leaves. It was making the tea that I didn't have people for because they were all in the fucking hospital. So then their, their other people's moods got worse, and they went berserk, and more people ended up in the hospital. Um, oh, it sounds like it's just like coffee, but it's like way worse addiction effect. Yes. Basically, it's like cocaine coffee. Yeah, it, it was. It's basically yeah. brewed cocaine leaves. And mind you, th this is the game where the other use for these leaves is to actually make. It, they call it yayo, but it's it's really heroin, and you can sell that they to traders. It, they call it yayo, but it's heroin. Yeah. No, oh, it's it's okay. that makes sense. Yeah, I was about to say, why the fuck would they call it Yayo? If it was oh, I'm sorry. Yayo? It's Yayo. Yayo is the um, okay. cocaine. Yayo Flake. Cocaine. Flake is the uh, heroin. Yeah, heroin. that makes more sense. Yeah, that one's heroin's far more addictive. So Flake is far more addictive and way yeah. worse for you. And cocaine is slightly less addictive, but it still has more addictive tendencies than like Ambrosia and beer. Yeah, yeah. probably more debilitating. Oh, I've also run out of beer too. Oh well, that's not good. No, you're fucked. I mean, you're, you're just fucked at that point. I am totally fucked, yes. Man, Shadow is so fucking fast. If this were Dwarf Fortress, he would already have done it. Yeah, fortunately these guys don't actually need to drink. And I had some beer fermented, it was just sitting in the in the barrel. 
Oh, it finished the fermenting process, but nobody had harvested it. Right. So I, I just wouldn't force them to grab it. So now I have 50 beer, and they're all drinking beer. Ah, that plus 13 is always nice. Yeah, it keeps the mood up, so that, so that at least they got that. There's also like blood, like my my hospital. I have sterile tiles. the The cleanliness of the hospital is minus ten point six nine. Ouch! Because literally there is blood, vomit, and boom rat guts over everything. Because remember when I said they got to my hospital? Yeah, those boom two boom rats made it through my defenses, knocked everybody out by blowing themselves up, and a couple suicide bombing rats got into my hospital where people were recovering from the suicide bombing rats. That's always the worst. Yep. Yeah, the worst, I think, is when you have bad animals and they get through your base. Yeah. But, see, now that I have turrets, it's much less of an issue, because they'll just show up and get shot to pieces by the turrets. Yep. Well, except that apparently the turrets are worse shots than my colonists. But they're more of a... Uh... Quantity over quality. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? How did he get cornered all the way fucking over there? Why the fuck was he over there? God fucking damn it. He just allowed some rats to fucking take him down. Oof. Yeah. Like I said, I'll happily engage with elephants in open, flat ground warfare. But man, fuck those boars. Well, I'm also in control of the pawns when I'm doing the elephant stuff, so I can move them pretty quick. <laughs> uh, one mod under that I think you would appreciate to pick up, again, not a super game-changing mod, it's just an ease for, like, placing pawns, would be the um, Achutung, I don't, Achutung. I don't know how to pronounce it. Achtung? Yeah, that might be. It's a military term. But basically it allows it's you to... German. It just means attention. Okay. Yeah. Basically it allows you to click and drag when you're placing pawns and you can string them out in a, you know, a line versus having to move them one by one into a, you know, split up group like mm. that. It's, it's just literally like that simple. Like that's all that I use it for. I think it has other stuff. Also, but I can move them all the way up and stand attention but in German. Essentially, I guess. But, well, in the base game, like, when you tell a group of pawns to move to an area for, you know, in defensive positions, they just get as close to where the mouse is as possible. There's no real positioning. They do favor the going into cover. That is, they do yeah. actually favor going into cover. But when you're working with, you know, a bunch, yeah, it's a lot harder to move them around. So you literally pretty much end up having to do it one by one. And this just makes it so much easier because I can just like click and drag and, and it shows you where they're going to stand too, which is really nice instead of just a green dot. But yeah, this is one that I watched one of my uh, people online using and I was like, man, I really need that because it's so handy to be able to just like even with three pawns, just like click and drag them across an opening. And it'll spread them out so that they don't take, you know, damage from Doomsday Rockets and stuff. Okay, I think... Oh. I'm rebuilding my hospital again, but this time I'm just going to blueprint my other one, and, uh... 
turn it sideways and then put two of them side by side with the uh, centers overlapping. Does that mean more hospital beds for big trauma things? Instead of having the individual room with, you know, like five or six surgery rooms and then one room with a bunch of common beds and stuff like that? That always ends up with the disturbed sleep debuff and shit like that. It's just like, and I was like, okay, I'll just make all the individual rooms. Oh, hey, and a, and a psychic drone. Wonderful. Hey, cargo pods full of synth thread. You know, for that crafting industry, I, I can support. I mean, it's nice to have around. Yeah, it is, but it's just funny. Like I've got people taking psychic tea and alcohol. You're getting them crossfaded for their own survival. Well, it, it boosts their spirits to keep them from going berserk and eating each other's faces. But it sounds like you're getting them crossfaded for like, yeah, for their own. Well, we're down to eating rat meat. Rat meat meals or raw? Meals, still. But I only have 16 of those left. Oof. But I do have 113 bars of chocolate in the freezer. Hey. It's food. It has virtually no nutrition, though. Yeah, and they can't have any until they finish their meat. I, I like how I have this guy set to number one priority, cook. 
What does he do? He goes and continues working on this steel fucking plate armor on the forge. Should be able to cancel his priority and I'll go cook. Needs material for cooking a simple meal, even though I have rat meat. Oh, I don't have enough yeah, of it. Ten? Ah, yeah. He yeah. Ten. And no one's harvesting the potatoes. This is this is this is a problem. I've actually run out of foodstuffs to cook. Very soon we're going to be surviving entirely on smoke leaf and cycoid leaves. I don't think that's gonna go very long. I basically have hundred and ninety seven bushels of tobacco. Yeah. Come on, Frank, get back for the damn picture. I'm so ruining everybody's moods with this. <laughs> Good news is the potato harvest is almost in. Oh, that's hilarious. I had someone go, because of poor mood, they went and decided to be cruel to the prisoners. They picked a fight with them. They threw one punch, and then the prisoners just immediately kicked their ass. This is what happens when the person who's incapable of violence, they literally have zero skill in melee, goes and, uh, <laughs> you know, picks a fight. I decided to take a group picture before I go to bed. Nice. I'm putting it in the D&D &D chat. I saw. What? No, you didn't. It's not uploaded. Oh, I, I thought that was the latest one. I just looked over and I saw it. What was? It was labeled new on my screen. Oh, that one is the... Um, read up like in Dwarf Fortress where it does the read up for the attacks and stuff. Oh, read yeah. up what it did to his stomach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the group picture. My four melee brawlers with their uh, thrombone horns, and then the uh, thirty-four guys with assault rifles that shoot a six mili six millimeter railgun bullet, essentially. <laughs> oh hell yes. Yeah, the uh, the R15 are really good. Roth fungus and 31 simple meals from uh, pods. Oh, there you go. There's your food problem solved for at least a little while. Yeah. Oh, speak of the devil, I got a prosthesis trader. Yeah, I told you I was going to ruin a lot of moods doing that. Because getting everybody into position and then... Um, do you not have a meal? Eat a fucking meal, dude. I don't know why you're freaking... Like, this dude is like, I'm starving. You have three meals in your goddamn inventory. Eat one. <laughs> we have food, bro. But I gotta get to a table, man. Wars against war crimes right there. Yeah. <laughs> gotta have a table. It's a war crime to eat without a table. I love that in this game. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, a war crime is an actual mechanic? No, no. It's a mood debuff of, like, minus three, eight without a table. <laughs> but it's stacked, so every time they eat without a table, they get a minus three mood buff. Eventually, he drives them insane. Yeah, it only goes it 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 um it goes away after like a day, so you can only have like two or three of them stacked at most. But it's still really annoying early game when you don't have a table built. It's like I'm sorry, I can't do anything about it. <laughs> yeah, it's like the first thing I do now is like, okay, step one, build a table. Cause fuck this goddamn <laughs> mood debuff. I haven't had a table in my house in years, and I don't recall getting any mood. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's called a war crime in this game. It's, it's like it's a running joke calling it a war. Well, crime. because it, it produces like the same effect from somebody. It's it's slightly better, or I should say, if if you, we have a prisoner that isn't otherwise like convicted of a crime, like we just captured them from an attack. Um, 
if I harvest their organs, people get a, a mood debuff of minus five, which is just slightly worse than eating without a table. Like, I forcefully would, you know, take captured prisoners literal. or, yeah. Or even kidneys. Like, they have a spare, but it still gives you a mood debuff. Is this before or after you execute? Before. Removing, removing the liver would execute them. Yes. But uh, that's why you take the heart, because it's worth more. Right. They're worth the same. Well, you can remove their heart without killing them? No, it no, kills no, them. No. That's they why you choose that one to remove. Oh. Liver and heart are both insta kills. If you can get them out with botching, without botching it, right, Underdark? If you can get it out without botching it. If you botch it wrong, it can cause issues, yes. That sounds like it would still kill them, you just don't get the heart. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Same with... So uh, you, you botched the lethal operation so bad that it doesn't... You, you cut the heart in half during the operation type thing. Yeah. I've had ones where I've botched um, installing implants. That one's annoying. Because the implants are worth a lot and take a long time to build. Like, so to make the advanced bionic leg, first I have to make a simple prosthetic leg. Pardon my lisp right there. And then I have to turn that into... With the simple prosthetic leg, you turn that into a regular bionic leg, and then you turn that into an advanced bionic leg, each one using slightly more plasteel components and advanced components every time. So, when you botch this installation of advanced prosthetics like that, it's like, come fucking on. Because they're worth like three or four thousand silver. <laughs> they just delete them. Well, they just staged a prison break. That was a bad idea. Yeah, considering... Now, it wasn't a bad idea because they're we're currently... I had to move my interior barracks as, as prison. Which is only, like, a door and a half... Like, two doors away from the main stockpile warehouse, which has all the guns and shit in it. So they made a beeline for the guns. Problem is, is I had my two guys there in full armor with knives that just... In, because of the close quarters bullshit, they just... Uh, Ran up 20, to them and, yeah, and one by one. just stabbed all the, them down, even though the prisoners got their hands on pistols. If they had broken out of the front, there's only one way in and out of, out of my base. That's the front door. There's four mini turrets there. <laughs> they weren't getting out. It would have been a bad day. Yeah, they would have. They would have like run out like free. Oh shit! God damn fucking turrets. Yeah, this sounds like the setup to an action movie or something. <laughs> a lot of that happens in this game. Like, a lot of yeah. movies. It's like, man, that would make such a great movie, because when does 500 fucking rabbits attack? Oh, yeah. That's like a, that's like a Stephen King... Or, no, that's like an Alfred Hitch... Fucking Alfred, Alfred Hitchcocks. Hitchcock. The rabbits. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you say Alfred Hitchcocks? Yeah. Yes, he has Right. Of course. Yeah, I was gonna say like with the uh, the prison break thing, that's either gonna turn into like into like the rock or possibly like Metal Gear Solid. See, the one thing speaking of the rock in prison break movies, the one thing I'm happy with is that they're letting the fucking Fast and Furious franchise die, but they're expanding the universe. Like the the Hobbs and uh, whatever Jason Statham's character is. Like, that movie actually looked like it was going to be good. Didn't hear much about it. I don't know if that's out on DVD yet, but I got to torrent it and watch it. I'm 100% okay with that, as long as it, like, allows for the creation of more, like, gloriously shitty action. Yeah, but trying to, you know, carry on fucking Fast and Furious past 5 was stupid. And 5 was stupid. <laughs> yeah, no, like, the... I mean, the direct lineage of Fast and Furious obviously needs to die at this point, but there's no reason you can't use the corpse to create, like, further... Yeah. You can you can expand the universe, keep some of the characters in and stuff like that, and make spin-offs, but don't continue to drag the snake out to the point where it's already shed three skins past what it should have been shedding. Right. Yeah, it, it, I don't remember what the name of it exactly was. It's, um... It's basically it's Jason Statham and The Rock get teamed up together by the government agencies and they're like okay well we need you two to work together 
and they're sitting down at this interview table. Both of them stand up and say, um, I don't remember what they're fucking. I gotta look at the trailer now. But it was both. It was really funny. They oh, you mean, you mean that rock? Okay, I didn't realize you were going for that big of a transition. Yeah. Dwayne Johnson, The Rock? Yeah, well, I, I was talking about the movie The Rock with Nicolas Cage. <laughs> See, I didn't hear that part. I just heard The Rock, and well, who do you think of when somebody says The Rock? Dwayne motherfucking Johnson. So no, true. Oh, yeah, Hobbs and Shaw is what you're talking about. Yeah, that one. Yep, yep, yep. I'll be back. Okay. It's like this freezer used to be overflowing with food. Oh hey, a random wanderer has joined. Great. Oh, for fuck's sake. Pyromaniac. Incapable of skilled labor or firefighting. Well, the firefighting is a given. Yeah, but it, it, it's the skilled labor shit. Like, God no, fucking no, damn it. I needed cooks! I needed farmers! I don't give a you shit if you're good at animal husbandry. That doesn't help me any right now. Done, you can only do dumb labor and animal husbandry. And he also sets stuff on fire. <laughs> yes. And he also sets stuff on fire.
Yeah, the trailer just says summer, so it might be a release date now. But yeah, if you haven't seen that trailer, I would definitely highly recommend it. It's hilarious. Uh, for Hobbs and, um, yeah. Yeah, Shaw and Hobbs, or Han, Hobbs and Shaw, whatever it is. Yeah, watch the, just look up the first trailer. I don't know, there's a couple trailers now, but the first one is always the one that I like watching because that's the, you know, the initial time you see it. Movies come out with like 18 trailers now before the movies. You pretty much know what's gonna happen. I hate that so much. Oh, this looks great. Hey, got a got a new recruit. There you go. Now you're getting back up. Yeah. So the boom rats were not a uh, TP or TPK. <laughs> yeah, not yet. Not this time. <laughs> Got a drop pod full of medicine, and it killed a uh, ostrich. They're cass cassowary. They're they're weird looking ostriches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm really glad you, you uh, showed me this. This looks incredible. Yeah, and I don't think that's going to be a bad movie at all, like, from how they portray it. it doesn't no, it's look... like... I, I was expecting, like, a cheesy action movie, and it is kind of like a cheesy action movie, but it's also just really good-looking. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's, like a... it's the same studio that produced all the Fast and Furious, and they made eight or nine of them, so... Yeah. But, no, this, this really feels like they're branching out into, like, uh... It's like they're sort of, well, I don't know, I can't fucking, but, you know. Expanding the universe? No, but I mean, like, they're, uh, they're branching out creatively. Yeah, that's that. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Do you watch the whole thing? Um, I've what? I'm watching one of the trailers. Well, not, yeah, I meant you watch one whole trailer. Yeah. Did you did you see the part where you said I saved the world four times? I'm kind of good at it. I love that. No, I didn't make it to that part yet. I'm like I'm like two minutes into the uh, the like three and a half. No, okay. Uh, yeah, I gotta see this though. This looks really good. It's like uh, it, it's like they made uh, it's like they made Metal Gear Solid into a movie. I know I keep bringing up Metal Gear, but that's honestly what this. Yeah, the Super Soldier kind of brings a Metal Gear into it. Yeah, as soon as I mentioned, like, genetically enhanced Super Soldier, I was like, oh, okay, it's Metal August 2nd. That's only two months away. See, and I rarely, rarely go to movies and theaters, but is that that's probably one I would go to a theater for. Yeah. Oh, I just got to the part where you were doing the haka. That's fucking cool. The what? The haka. You know, like when he goes home.
I didn't understand what word you said. Do, do you know what the haka is? Like haka? Yeah, haka. You know, like the uh, the traditional uh, fucking uh, Maori like war celebration day. Nope. Oh, well. It's pretty cool. It is really fucking cool. Oh, for fuck's sake! Really? I know, man. I can't believe he doesn't know what it is. This motherfucking cougar. A cougar show- like, I just recruited this person, and then a cougar, like, immediately killed her. Thank you. Was her last name Red Shirt? No, it was Grunt. Oh, that's even worse. Like, I just fucking, you know, got, got you in this place, goddammit. She's been buried by the Mega Sloth. At least she wasn't wearing, you know, any good, my good plate armor. I almost feel like I should have stopped watching this trailer, because they put so many, like, good action set pieces in it, but there's, like, nothing that I probably haven't seen. <laughs> like, you can't front load your trailer with all of the cool shit that's going to be in your movie. That just I mean, means there's going to be more cool shit in the movie. I guess. Like, I almost, I almost don't believe it, though, because there's been so much cool shit I can't imagine they could fit in it. Well, you got to think movie runtimes for so long now. I guess. I don't know, but there's... Like, I'd have to go back and count, but there's been at least, like, five separate, like, really good-looking action sequences that I've seen. Like, I don't know. They just have to squeeze a lot into one movie to get that many and in the trailer and then still have like a bunch of shit that's that I haven't seen. Yeah, it seems like the trailer they front loaded a lot of action and they kept a lot of the story out, but they kept enough of the story in for you to know something good is gonna happen. Yeah. Or on a more cynical note, what you saw in the trailer is literally the only good stuff. Ooh. What yeah, see that's that? what I'm afraid of. <laughs> Why are you gonna do that? You just killed the hype. Because I, because I don't trust Hollywood to make good films yeah. anymore. That's that's like that's the reason YouTube channels like Honest Trailers exist. <laughs> and Cinema Sins. I love Cinema Sins. I'm sure you've heard Ding in the background when I'm sitting around. I watch a lot of Cinema Sins. I, I want when I when I first found it and I started binge watching it, that ding sound, well, it turns out that sound specifically travels through the house really well. <laughs> so it it was driving my dad nuts. He couldn't figure out what it was. Trying to figure out where the ding noise was coming from. Oh no. So so zoom in another corpse. Oh boy, that's a fun one. The fact that you've had so many of them is hilarious. <laughs> it's the same guy, it's Mike the Janitor. They keep zooming Mike the Janitor. <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't know. I'm sure they added that mental break recently too. Because the mental breaks used to be pretty bland. But when they added that one, I just I just like I'm like, I'm glad they added that because we definitely needed better mental breaks than fucking tantrums and hide in room and all that stuff like those those really those really spice the game up and make it feel more like dwarf fortress with the complete random bullshit that happens it's mm -hmm. like oh this guy's pissed off well, i'm gonna go dig up a corpse you're gonna do what <laughs> <laughs> kind of like honey and mead yeah honestly this mega sloth that i that i've trained has has been like you know he, he's like our 
star colonists. He's been hauling shit left, right, and center. He's buried half of the dead colonists that I have graves for. Well, he's over now. Yeah. <laughs> same guy. He's buried the same guy like five times. Why does they keep digging him up? <laughs> yeah. well, I had a series where someone had a metal break and dug up the mic. So, so the mic is all that goes and reburies him. So then someone else had a mental break and went and dug Mike back up. Like, it, it happened like three times in a row. These people need to let go. It's been way too long. <laughs> like, Mike must have been a fucking great guy for them to want to dig him back up like three times. <laughs> it's five. It's been five times now. Jesus. They won't let him die. Tell us more about Mike. Um, he was one of my original colonists. He died d holding his ground to defend the, um, the colony hospital against hostile boom rats that were suicide bombing the base. Right. By the way, the, his blood still has not been cleaned up. The hospital is still coated in his blood and um, boom rat guts. The hospital is actually, the, there's only one room dirtier than the hospital. And that's the butcher, <laughs> the butcher room. <laughs> the abattoir. Now, the kitchen's at minus five. The butchery's at minus twelve. Oh, actually, the, the butchery's worse. The hosp the uh, the butchery's at minus twelve, and the hospital's only at minus you know eleven. The prison's at minus eight. The dining room's at minus five. Literally, basically, there's like blood and guts all over the damn base, and I just have no one to spare. Yeah, this hospital rework is going to be fun. But it would be nice to have the big hospital. <laughs> have you ever played uh, Prison Architect Underdark? Yeah. Do you like the blueprint thing? Eh, it's alright. There is a blueprint mod for World War Yeah, it's not that great. If you guys are familiar with Prison Architect, have you seen the video where the guy just doesn't build a prison and instead he just Those like farms farm? wood? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Spiffing Brit. Yeah. yeah, Spiffing Brit's hilarious. I love his game break videos. Yeah, he's so funny. <laughs> Well, the funny thing is, is like he always he, he plays Rimworld too, and he says stuff about Rimworld not having tea, and it's like, well, I'm sorry, the vegetable mod has tea because I can grow tea plants. <laughs> so I'm I'm really tempted to send him a link of it. You, did you were you um, around recently when he gave out his postal box? Oh uh, no, like I'm not that like I'm not that into the community. I've just seen some of it. He gave out his postal address, and he said that he got over a thousand. Individual bags of tea and envelope from people. Jesus. <laughs> I just sent them a box of tea from America, like American tea. Mm. But, um, Which yeah, people like were sending him like, a tea bag in an envelope. <laughs> oh, now there's fucking blight. You shouldn't even be allowed to send that in an envelope. Like, Take it. Yeah, I don't think you're allowed to. It, it, blight always seems to occur when all of my colonists are asleep, too, so it just spreads. So I just had a Psychic Soothe and a party at the same time. Wonderful. All of my colonists are green. <laughs> I bet. I don't think I've ever seen that. Well, I have the mood color mod, so I can actually see their mood based on a color on the top. Yeah, under I played pretty much vanilla Rimworld. I just had a lot of um, ease of life mods installed. Mm -hmm. I mean, other than the giant power generator, I gotta figure out what my pack is in. I'm pretty sure it's room atomics. Oh, this dude has plasteel. Buy all the plasteel. 
we can have my ambrosia and my wake up. Oh yes, there's also basically um, Rimworld has a, a version of Adderall as a drug called Wake Up. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, that was more for Pete back on the drug. Oh, I didn't realize Pete didn't know. Yeah, no, I don't play Rimworld. I don't know what it... Yeah, he's he's unfamiliar with Rimworld completely. So. Okay, fair enough. But yeah, they have they have basically Adderall, which basically the picture of it looks like a, a like a hash ball. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, you can feel free to tell me as much stuff about it as you want, because I'm probably never gonna. I would highly recommend it, even if you probably will never play it. Yeah, I'm not really into that kind of thing though. Oh, good, I can get rid of the advanced bionic hand. Ooh, he has a cybernetic liver. But at least you have that joy wire right under, right under there, right? Right? Joy wire? Oh, the the anti pain <laughs> stopper? Yeah, yeah I have... you have the pain stopper, my bad. I have a joy wire sitting around. Nice. Yeah, I don't have anyone that I really want to give that to. Maybe I'll, I would give it to Wu Wei. You need a doctor. Well, yeah, I need someone who can actually install because she's got the uh, fibrous mechanite. So if I can get rid of her pain, she gets all the benefit of it, but none of the. Problems. Negative. Yep. Yeah. But before I'm willing to do that, I need a doctor with a skill above three. Which seems getting harder and harder for you to do. If I can recruit the one prisoner I still have, she's a medical eight and a, like a flame for it. Ooh, passions are good. Yeah. So, like, like, at that point, she'll just be my medic, and I'll immediately have her put this in before she goes berserking. I lose this person, too. Well, actually losing money on this trade, and I had to sell all of my chocolate, but I guess I can make another chocolate factory. But I am getting a lot of good stuff. Like, I mean, I suppose I didn't really need to buy the 100 beer. Or actually, 170 beer. Or the 373 gold. But, eh, all's well that ends well. <laughs> you actually get that reference? <laughs> Not many people do. I'm actually surprised. <laughs> kind of one of my like just sayings that I throw out there, and nobody ever like reacts to it. Uh... Okay, was it low key? Yes, I have a bard named Loki who has a social of sixteen. Nice. Well, this, he's a counselor, but yeah, he's double flame and social, so I try to use him with all my trades. I have him as my highest priority warden. Everybody else is a two in wardening, so he gets priority. I wish, I really did wish that you could switch it so that the priorities went the other direction, and then it followed the normal priority procedure, you know, right to left, like with just the checkbox. Four, boxes. I actually have a question for you, Ruffles. If I have two jobs on a furnace, smelt weapon forever, smelt metal from slag, do they block... Cause like I also let me step back. I have uh, 
the stone crafting table. Make slate blocks, 205 out of 450. Make sandstone blocks, 0 out of 450. If it can't find any, any slate, it will make sandstone ones, right? Yes, if the bill runs out, they will move on to the no, next No, no, if it bill. doesn't run out, but there's no materials for the first bill. Yeah, if, there's, if they run out of material for the first bill, that's what I meant. Okay. Yeah, if they, if they can't fill the bill and they run out of material, they should progress on to the next bill. Because you can do, like, if you think about it on the, the butchering table, you can do butcher creature forever, and then, or, you know, butcher creature um, quantity, and if there's no creatures to butcher, and then you have, like, make silage or make um, kibble, they'll actually make the kibble. Same with meals. So if you have multiple meals with different um, quantities and they run out of... Because I have my simple meals set to only use meat because, well, elephants. So I don't really need to use up my veggies, which are more important for the lavish and fine meals that I make. So I have been only using meat. So if they did run out of meat, for whatever reason, they wouldn't make simple meals... I suppose that's, that's a poor example because they would always prioritize making the simple meals as soon as they get meat. Um, um, but yeah, basically you had a bill that said make simple meals out of meat first and then another bill that said make simple meals out of vegetables and they ran out of meat, they would continue to make simple meals. It works for the same same concept as, yeah, if they run out of slate chunks, they'll make marble or whatever. Even without the bill being successfully filled. Yeah, I just have mindset to make stone chunks forever because... I always run out of stone with how big my bases get. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm doing good because the one mining place that I went to had a uh, whole bunch of chunks on it, and so I just made <laughs> um, stone uh, cutting tables and turned them all into stone. And it was limestone, so I don't primarily use limestone for building. Or no, sandstone. So... I forget which one's which. Granite is the strongest, marble is the prettiest, sandstone is the fastest, and I always forget which slate and limestone are the be most beneficial for. But yeah, the three that I primarily use are sandstone, marble, and granite, because marble is the most beauty, granite is the most structurally sound, and then sandstone is the quickest to build with. Well, I've got a bunch of slate on my map, so that's what I'm using. Yeah, Slate, I think, is third strongest, so that's a good one to have. Yeah, most of my base is Slate. I had Slate as my primary go-to. Oh, I have actual on-the-ground traders. I haven't had one of them guys in a while. But anyway, but yeah, back to the work priority. I wish there was at some point in the game where you could turn it so it worked up to down on the numbers so that everybody in handling, the people with the one handling, would prioritize handling first over the people with the three in handling. But then that's a whole lot more math for figuring out the other priority direction.
And then here is the uh, same question you had, but in reverse underdark in the uh, Discord upload. <clears throat> Essentially, basically, if a bill above the bill that they're working on is um, freed and they leave the bill and then come back, they'll put the shit on the ground and start working on the higher priority bill. It's like, for fuck's sake, guys. <laughs> Because my Bionics workbench has, you know, 15-something bills on it. For all the different um, upgrade and all the other things that I have for, you know, make the Bionic leg, upgrade the Bionic leg. So they, they shuffle priorities on that one all the time. It's really annoying. Nothing I can do about it. Yeah, I'm considering just going straight to nutrient paste at this point. Um, do you have the ability to research pemmican? Yeah. Pemmican it would be a better route. Why pemmican is, is is one of the best starting nutrient value things, like the for the maths. And they don't get the mood debuff for eating paste. Like I think pemmican's neutral. I have to double check. I cannot guarantee that that is correct. From what I remember, looking at the math, is pemmican is okay, but it um, it's basically the same as a fine as a normal meal. It just it lasts longer unrefrigerated. Refrigeration is not my problem. That that's the benefit to pemmican is it, it's like it's packaged survival meals that uh, are like a primitive version of it. For me, it's totally just about the quantity. I can't, I'm having trouble keeping up with food pr meal production, and I have no skill to cook, so people are constantly getting food poisoning right now. Uh. Nice thing about nutrient paste is it's immune to food poisoning. It just tastes like shit. So that boomalop that was pregnant gave birth to another female boomalop. Well, I thought that counts. Yeah. But you can at least get a little chem fuel out of them still. Yeah, I mean, I still have them for uh, this. And if by chance a boomalop does show up, I'll t I have manager set to tame it. Make one male, yeah.
I like that this doctor had a recruitment difficulty, 99%. Resistance remaining, 20.6. Part of that's probably because I, I keep getting, like, there's like vomit all over the prison right now because she keeps getting food poisoning. Whoopsie. Sorry, not sorry. Yeah, the biggest difference I think between nutrient paste, uh, nutrient paste, and pemmican is the mood debuff. In well, that it, that pemmican, uh, pe like you don't make uh, pem uh, nutrient paste meals. You don't have to pre-make it. It's just raw shit that gets processed. Yeah, without cooking skill requirements. Right. So you can't have food poisoning for pemmican, essentially. Yep. So the problem is the blight just took out when, when it hit, hit took out all my psychite uh, crop. So now I have nothing to make psychite tea with. Uh oh. Yeah. Uh oh. Garandor, one of my uh, riflemen, is already at extreme break risk. Basically, three of my five colonists are addicted to Psychite Tea. Okay, in terms of math, strictly nutrition to make, nutrition yield, nutri nutrition paste, and pemmican are the exact same, so it wouldn't matter which route you went. Right, just whether do I want to use my butchery table with a cooking skill, or do I want to make... Oh, goddamn. Well, the only thing is, is pemmican won't take butcher or cooking skill into factory.
for I'm just saying the pemmican thing because for a majority of the max min players that I watch on RimWorld, I've never really seen any of them use a nutrient base when they're in a pinch. They pretty much all jump pemmican. Well, they probably do that because hay grows very easily. See, for me, it's not a food shortage in this. Like I have, I have four dead pigs, two dead muffalos, and three dead alpacas that I, were hunted that are in my freezer. I just don't have the manpower to to process all this food. That's where nutrient paste comes in handy versus pemmican. It requires no labor. Oh, I see. You're going for the labor factor. Okay. Yeah, I need I need labor free food. Or as close to it as I can get. Alright, well, I think I'm gonna head off. I'll see you guys later. Yep. See ya. Especially with these, these psychite uh, hits I'm taking. Like, uh, I got two people of my five that are currently unworking because uh, they've been psychotic wandering for one of them. Yeah, I usually have pretty strict with drugs in the game. I learned that pretty early on. That if you're gonna make drugs, make sure your drug policy is one drink a day. <laughs> well, it is one, it is one drink a day, and I usually had plenty of it. It's just when the crop failed, <laughs> I ha I had a psychite famine, which was unfortunate. But mm -hmm. Let's see, high explosive shells. 10, 20 steel and 10 chem fuel. Oh, I got that plenty. I got over, I got close to 300 chem fuel. Well, there you go. And boom, Lokes were working hard. Oh, yeah, yeah. That they were. Man, this is like moving around on my giant 2,000 population colonies of Banished. Basically, you have to pause the game to move. <laughs> I mean, it's not that bad. I can move around. It's just every time I touch the button, it doesn't go for a second. Yeah. Bunch of Outlanders. Let's see. Revolver. Knife. Normal machine pistol, normal bolt action, normal revolver, normal auto pistol. One of these guys got a flak vest, flak pants. Damn, these guys aren't horribly equipped.
Black Panzer. Yes, yes, they are. One of my two riflemen just went catatonic. Great. Catatonic good. Oh wait, no, I'm sorry. Catharsis is the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, catatonic bad. Very. Yeah, that's one of the ones that they're uh, unknown. Cracking a beer with the boys.
I'm also gonna get going. Have a good night, guys. Have a good night, sir. I just made a two by two room and set the uh, freezer because it's my freezer buffer and it just worked out the way that the building fell with the old buildings overlapping new buildings and everything like that. This is my my oversized giant freezer that I made and it had this little six by six and I was like, okay, I'm going to make an airlock right there. And one of my freezers happens to fall into that airlock. So I was like, okay, well, I'll leave that one there. And so I have it set to negative 219. Let's see how cold a four by four room can get or a two by two room can get. Mm -hmm.
the one thing I wish with the colony being this big, I had more storage priorities. Because mm -hmm. then I could tier my bigger fridges so that, you know, they store closer to the door and then get further away with also having the differenti differentiating piles between freezer to freezer. So yeah. essentially I need like 12 priorities for my storage for how big this shit is. Well, I've got my nutrient paste dispenser set up. Woohoo, congrats, you won't die. For now. At least they'll be getting food while they're high. Yeah. Looks like it's peaking right around negative 40. Oh, 50. They rather would eat raw meat than the nutrient paste. What the fuck? Make sure it's in their food bill that they can actually eat it. Because a lot of people use nutrient paste for prisoners, so they'll it's just a fight to bolt. I think forbidden, so they can't eat it. No, it really it allows everything. Yeah, it's set to allow everything. Boomer has flown into a murderous rage and decided to kill Jess. The fuck? Jess is in the fucking hospital. Well, death by pillow. We did. Jess isn't even really, uh... Okay, well, this barn is getting a little dirty. When there's negative 5, beauty negative 15. Eesh. I just told three pawns to clean up the room already. <laughs>
Purple Spectre, I finally got to do the thing on Pange. I haven't gotten to do it in a while. What's that? The uh, C4 glitch. Oh, nice. Yeah, I freaking love that. There's at least three uh, three bad guys upstairs, too. You're sitting there watching the stairs, and all of a sudden they booze. The Underdark, remember how I had 3,000 corn? Mm -hmm. I have 300 corn now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that happens. Damn quick. Well, considering I'm pumping out so many fine and lavish, that's my primary food source, so... Because my rice, that's just for making silage. So that I can make silage, because you need hay and a veggie product. That's a grain. So I don't want to use corn, because corn is up and down, so I have a small rice field to ironically equal the giant, two giant hay fields I have. Well, one of my guys just... Apparently I found some wake-up on one of those guys. I didn't realize this. It's been in my freezer this whole time. Uh, he's oh. gone on a drug binge mental break and has overdosed on Wake Up, gaining an addiction and drug overdose. This is in addition to his psychite addiction withdrawal. Ah, good times. And his trivial minor uh, mal malnutrition, because, you know, for whatever reason, they're just refusing to eat the, the nutrient paste. Like, like there's, there's no, they're, <laughs> they're, they're eating raw potatoes rather than turning the potatoes into nutrient paste. Thank you. 
be fun if they ever included thermodynamics into this game. <laughs> Super cold room with a door, open the door and have the uh, heat from the other room basically get sucked out. Well, it does. It does model temperature variation that way. Yeah, but that would also create a draft. Oh, you wanted to model the airflow. Yeah. Basically, you make heat cannons and uh, cool cannons. <laughs> yeah. That'd be good. Oh, yeah. I made, um... Well, what do you call them? Romanian, Romanian fridges? I've, I've, I've made stuff like that, but I typically go the heat route because it's easier to chuck in a Molotov and board up the door behind them. Just, you know, have a bunch of wooden chairs and uh, the chairs are stools that have, yeah, stools, a bunch of wooden stools in there and, you know, like a long skinny hallway and then a wooden floor. And it's basically chuck a Molotov in there and the whole room will set on fire, have stone walls and stone doors on both ends. Basically force the raiders that they want to go through that hallway and then shish kebab. See, so yeah, I've talked to you about uh, Spinward Fringe before, right? When I was Sounds familiar. The, uh, Odyssey campaign off of. Yeah. And uh, you said you don't really read? No, I do read. Okay. I just I haven't read, read that particular books. book. I'll send you the books. I have all the physicals. Nah, don't worry about it. I got a backlog of books I'm reading through. <laughs> That's what it was. You're, you have so many books in your list that it wasn't worth your time. It, it's you yeah, pretty much. It's I. I got to be careful about what books I add because I. I will never catch up. The bad. thing is, I got a feeling that if you started reading this series, you would be like me, where it's like you're waiting for the next one to come out. Which the next one just did come out, and it was really good. He did. I, this author is just by far one of the best sci-fi authors I've read. Who's because, it by again? Sorry. Uh, Randolph Lando or Land okay. Land Lalona Lalona. Yeah, he's, I mean, it's just impossible to describe. Like, the first couple books, again, starting out in a genre he's unfamiliar with, he does a really good job roping you in and stuff like that. There are parts where he kind of over, I think the first couple are uh, first-person narratives. Um, you know, I and, you know, I and them versus um, him and um, his group, essentially. And then when he... I want to say it was Triton, the third book, is when it just, it seemed to explode and the universe expanded and the story got way better and it just, it just grew and grew and grew. Like, honestly, the first book, if you read it and you don't like it, I'll never talk about it again. <laughs> the first book is essentially when he started out and it was three short stories that got turned into one novel. That's what he started out with. He just wrote the three story stories kind of, you know, as a teaser and his buddy read it and his friend, his friend goes to him. He's like, I want more. <laughs> and this was, you know, non-published, just jotted down essentially. And his friend's like, you need to publish this. Like, I want more. And then it just kind of blew up from there. He now has 
I want to say 17 books in the Spinward Fringe universe. So, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely put it near the top of your list. <laughs> All right, tell you what, I'll put it second because I, I just got a new book from my favorite author, who's Neil Stephenson. He just had a new book okay. come out yep. for, called uh, Fall. And so I've, that's next to my reading list. All right. But yeah, by all means, if you don't want to, you know, go out and buy them or find them in a library, I'll, I'll happily ship you all 15 of them. I'll pay. <laughs> well, let's, let's not go that far right away. Let me uh, actually well, read one first <laughs> before we start the, jumping oh, on the, um, let, let's ship it everywhere. I was going to say, do you, do you prefer paper or are you okay with e-readers? I'm okay with e-readers. I have a minor preference for paper. So you don't have to buy it. This is how clever this author is the first book is free on ibooks and uh, kindle e-reader stuff i think oh, it's on the play store too i'm not sure yeah so the first book is completely free to read digitally it's not like the sample or anything like that it's the full book that is the sample <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. but um yeah, so I completely forgot to mention that. Yeah, the first book is completely 100% free to read on most uh, e-readers. So I just figured you travel a lot, so you probably have plenty of time to read books. I do um, when I'm when I am traveling. Uh, so that's actually when I go through a lot of books is when I do that. Sorry, I just had to read. Managing the forces. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, that attention is pretty. The German attention. Yeah. It's it's so nice. You just click and drag. I've just gotten used to it now. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. If you can just shoot me the link to that, I I'll take a look at oh. that after I finish reading Fall. And you know who knows? We can go from there. What what e-reader format would you like it in? Uh, I have the Kindle app on my phone. That's what I primarily okay. use. So I think I think that uses EPUB. Yeah. Well, no, it'll be you can find it on the Kindle. I'm just going to get you a link so okay. that if you open it on your phone, it should go right to it on the app. I think. Regardless, <laughs> you'll have a link to the title and author so you can find it. The son of it oh my god okay so he was having issues with his original publisher for tv and movie rights he has them back now that's awesome i'm so happy for him because he was fighting with his publisher on that because he originally you know didn't think it was really going to go anywhere and then he wrote more books and wrote more books and wrote more books but yeah hopefully hopefully do this this would be like the it would be a mashup of Game of Thrones and like Star Trek, essentially, for the universe feel of Game of Thrones having so much to see in all the different groups and things like that, and then the space age of Star Trek, but much further down the line. Fucking boom rats. <laughs> you make it friends, aren't you? I, I had one of my colonists repairing some of my shit after the last raid out on the defensive line, and a boom rat ran into the trap. Oof. Which, of course, blows up. I'm out of graves. You get off? No, no, I said I'm out of graves. Oh, I thought you said you're getting off. <laughs> Actually, I think I will be, too. Yeah, I'm getting off, too. I th yeah, out. I, I heard out, and I thought you said you're out for the night. I was like, you're out, I guess. <laughs> A couple boom rats will do that to you.
Oh, right, I was getting you a link. I got distracted. Sorry, getting link now. <laughs> hey, uh, can mortars fire in 360 degrees, or do I actually have to aim these things in an arc? Um, You mean, like, when you plop a dude down, can he shoot yeah. above you and below you? Yes, they, there is no there is no aim time. Okay. Yeah, there is no need to reposition the uh, turret. Yep. They're just a free, free. They're basically a, a free turret that has a min range and a max range. Right. Okay. Okay, that I think if you open that on your phone should link the ebook. If not, then you'd at least be able to find it. Mm -hmm. But yes, the paperbacks are fifteen.